Tropical Kiss and Tell. Written by Li Wen Wai Ho. Chapter 1. January. Fifteen years ago. Lucy. Can't I stay home? I can eat cereal for dinner. Lucy Choi fisted her hands and placed them on her hips. She stared at her father who was busy straightening his shirt collar. He stood before one of four mirrors hanging on the wall, all of them different sizes and shapes. The entryway was the brightest place in the house, displaying everyone's expressions and actions when they walked by. Tonight, the reflection looking back at her remained unfazed. No and no. Her dad, Lucas, turned to face her and shook his head. For as long as Lucy could remember, he'd always had a line between his brows, especially when she opened her mouth to speak. The rest of his face though appeared young and wrinkle-free, the only sign of aging a few gray hairs that came in at his temples when he turned thirty-five recently. You don't need all that sugar. And you are not staying home alone, Lucy. You're only ten. I can't believe you would even suggest such a thing. All my friends stay home alone. She tried hard to keep her voice even since whining never seemed to work. It's not like I'm a baby or a little kid like Lexi. Her five-year-old sister glanced up from where she sat on the tile floor. She held up her left foot and announced, I'm a big kid. I tied my shoe waces all by myself. Great job, sweetheart. Lucas gave her a thumbs up and Lucy a quirked brow. No more arguing. But Dad, Lucy continued to make her case, I'm practically a teenager. He rolled his eyes as he put on a coat. You may sound like one, but you've still got a few years to go. And until you're an adult and living under your own roof and able to support yourself, I'm responsible for you. I'm the head of this family and it's my job to take care of you, your sister, and your mom. The twitch of her dad's jaw muscle confirmed she was pushing his buttons again, but she didn't care. The last thing she wanted was to meet their neighbors. She hadn't wanted to move to this new house or change schools in the middle of fifth grade. But had anyone asked her what she wanted? Of course not. She crossed her arms, unwilling to back down. I can take care of myself. Her dad walked over and placed his hands on her shoulders. I know you can't wait to grow up, but trust me, you are not ready to take on the world. Listen to your dad. I'm a cop and I've seen a lot of things. I know what's out there, and it's not pretty, Lucy finished for him, her tone flat. How many times had she heard this speech? Exactly, he declared with a smile. So, you have been listening to me. Great work. Was that approval in her dad's voice? See how mature I am. I'm ready to stay home by myself. Not quite yet, Luce. Come on, it's only dinner. We won't stay long since we have church tomorrow. Now will you put on your jacket? Please. He kissed her on the forehead, then glanced at his watch. Where's your mom? Sammy, he called up the stairs. Are you ready? We're going to be late. Coming. The cheerful voice grew louder as a woman in a red dress came running downstairs. Her black hair swayed around her shoulders in loose curls and her face was lightly made up with mascara and a natural lip color. Rummaging through the leather handbag in her hands, she exclaimed, Has anyone seen my gold bangles? They were here, but now I can't find them. No, dear, Lucas replied, but you look beautiful without them. Let's go. The Chan said, six o'clock. We only have six minutes to spare. Lucas, you do realize it'll only take us one minute to walk next door, Sam smirked as she slipped on her nude-colored heels. Not at the pace, he cocked his head in Lucy's direction, some of us are going. That's why there's Asian time. At this rate, we'll be early, she joked. Why don't you wait for us outside? Sam ushered him out the front door, then gave Lexi a hand with her right shoe and sent her after him. She turned to Lucy with a hopeful grin. You ready, Luce? 
I don't have a choice, do I? She grabbed a pair of flip-flops from the hall closet and put them on. If she had to go, she'd go in comfortable shoes, especially ones her dad hated. He had a thing about being proper and presentable, and flip-flops were anything but on his list. They didn't go perfectly with her sweater or the chilly weather, but she didn't care. Winter in the San Francisco Bay Area was pretty tame anyway. Let's get this over with. Sam locked the door behind them. As they followed Lucas and Lexi down the driveway, she put her arm around Lucy's shoulder and whispered, the Chans have a son who's a little older than you. I have a feeling you won't be bored tonight. The wink Sam added made Lucy smile. She had to admit, she had the coolest mom around. For someone in her mid-thirties, she actually treated kids with respect, plus she had an awesome fashion sense. She'd introduced Lucy to the teen section of department stores and picked out the sweatpants she wore today, gray ones with the word, sassy, in purple cursive on the back. Her wardrobe had been one of the reasons she'd been so popular at school, that is, until they moved during Christmas break a month ago. They still lived in the city of Milpitas, but now all the way across town. Not only was she an outsider at home, she was also one at her new school. It wasn't fair. Those three words ran through her mind as she pushed her food around her plate half an hour later. She and Lexi had been relegated to a square mahjong table covered with a plastic tablecloth while the adults sat at the dining table. Her sister didn't mind as she'd become fast friends with the Chan's daughter. The two kindergartners giggled together and played with a row of animal figures standing between their plates. Who did she have to talk to? No one. The Chan's son was running home late from volunteering at the animal shelter. Lucy stabbed a pot sticker with her chopsticks, holding one stick in each hand to poke holes in the outer layer. She'd almost separated the filling from the skin when a shadow fell over her. Biting her lower lip, she looked up, expecting to see her dad's disapproving face. Instead a teenager with a lopsided grin sat down beside her. He had a head of thick black hair and dark brown eyes like the color of Oreo cookies. His white polo shirt was covered in black hair, likely from a dog or a cat. I eat pot stickers that way, too. I thought I was the only one who did that. He set his plate of food on the table. I'm Micah, by the way. Sorry I'm late. She set her chopsticks down. Was he actually talking to her? The only boy who ever paid attention to her was her cousin Benji, but he and his gross bathroom jokes didn't count. Micah seemed different, taller and more serious and mature. Maybe even cute. A strange sensation tingled in her tummy, making her cheeks warm. I'm Lucy. Hi Lucy. Micah reached over to ruffle his sister, Hope's, hair. It looks like these two are having a good time. I hope you weren't too bored with no one to talk to. No problem, she shrugged, trying to sound cool. This is what lunch is like for me at school every day. He eyed her for a moment and a line appeared between his eyebrows. That's not cool. It's okay, she offered, even though it wasn't. I'm getting used to it. I hope you don't. We all need friends. It may take time but I'm sure you'll make some new ones soon. How could he be so sure? How do you know? Have you ever had to move? No, he answered between bites of food, but a lot of things work out after a while. God's in control and there's a reason for everything that happens. Wow. Micah wasn't just mature, he was ancient. No kid talked this way. How old are you? I'm thirteen. Why? You sound older than that. His mouth curved up in a confident grin. I do, don't I? I think it's cause my voice is getting d, poor, he grimaced as the vowel came out as a squeak, most of the time that is. Lucy giggled to see the tips of Micah's ears turn red. I didn't mean your voice. It's what you said. You talk about God the way my pastor does. He's got white hair and wrinkles, 
kinda like Santa, but wiser. He chuckled. I only talk that way because it's true. God works out everything for our good, for those who love Him and are called to His purpose. There's a verse in Romans that talks about that. You'll see. But the Bible was written like a bazillion years ago. How do you know what it says still works today? Sure, she'd been going to Sunday school her whole life, but she still wasn't sure about half the stuff she learned. Maybe Micah understood it. He glanced over at the adult's table where their parents were trading stories about work and parenting. Lowering his voice, Micah confided to her, I saw it happen with my family. My parents split up for a while when I was eight. My mom and I got into a car accident, but because of that, my dad started spending more time with us and they got back together. I also prayed for a sibling and God gave us hope. Everything worked out in the end. You just need to have faith. She saw he meant well, but his words sounded empty to her. That's easy for you to say. Things worked out for you, but that doesn't mean they always do. Sometimes people get sick and they don't get better. Sometimes, she clenched her hands, the people you love die. Micah stopped eating, a pot sticker inches away from his mouth. He set it down and cocked his head. Did someone you love pass away? The fried rice on her plate became a blur of white, yellow, and green hues as tears gathered in her eyes. How embarrassing. Micah would think she was a crybaby. She took a deep breath and looked up. My mom. She had cancer. She died when I was three. I had no idea. I'm really sorry, he frowned. So that's your stepmom? Yeah. She's cool though. If I could have picked someone to be my mom, I would have picked her. I'm glad my dad married her. That part worked out, I guess. One side of his mouth curved up. It makes sense now. I was wondering why you don't look like them. Yeah, she'd never be as Chinese as her parents or her half-sister. She was like the oddball in Sesame Streets, one of these things aren't like the others, game. My mom was part Irish and part English. People always wonder why I look different from the rest of my family. When I'm with my parents and sister, I'm too pale. When I visit my grandma, my mom's mom, people wonder why my hair's not blonde and my eyes aren't blue. Sometimes I wish I could dye my hair black so I'd kind of fit in somewhere. Then people wouldn't stare at me. I think your hair's cool. Black's pretty boring if you ask me. Don't tell anyone, but when I get older I want to dye my hair, too. Really? What color? Maybe some streaks of blonde or white. Then I'd look like Dumbledore. He paused. He's the headmaster of the Hogwarts, you know, from Harry Potter. Lucy shook her head. My dad won't let me watch that. But I hear kids talk about it all the time. He's the good wizard, right? Yep. He's super smart and watches out for everyone. That's what I try to do, help my family and friends whenever I can. That's cool. I've always wanted an older brother or sister. It'd be nice to have someone to look up to. Hope's lucky to have you. Micah's eyes brightened. Hey, now that we're next-door neighbors, I'm sure our families will be hanging out a lot. If you want, I can be your honorary big brother. You could ask me about classes or homework or even boys, yuck, Lucy piped up with disgust. I don't like boys. They're disgusting. Okay, no boys yet, he laughed. But if you have questions about anything, you can ask me. I'll be happy to help. And the best part is you don't have to share a bathroom with me. What do you think? Micah's offer made Lucy feel accepted for the first time in a long time. Dinner was turning out way better than she expected. With his help, she'd find a way to fit in at her new school. She picked up her chopsticks, her appetite suddenly returning. She gave him a wide grin and nodded. Thanks, Micah. I'd like that. 
Chapter 1. January, Present Day. Lucy. Lucy poked her head into Micah's counseling office. Ready to go, Mikey. He looked up from his desk and motioned for her to sit. From the way his brows were drawn together, Lucy assumed he was in the middle of a serious phone conversation. She tapped her manicured nails on the wooden armrest and exhaled. If they didn't get going soon, they'd hit traffic. Rush hour usually started at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but it got a lot worse by 5, the exact time of their appointment. They couldn't risk being late, not today. Not on the day she was introducing her boyfriend to her big brother. Lucy smiled. The smartly dressed man in a blue dress shirt and khakis wasn't her blood sibling, but he might as well be. Micah had kept his word since they met to do everything an older brother would do, answer questions, give advice, and tease her whenever possible. He had changed in many ways over the past fifteen years, grown half a foot, gained a deeper voice and enough facial hair to require shaving daily, but his heart was the same. Always willing and eager to help people and watch out for them. Being a school counselor was the perfect job for him. He'd helped her navigate through some of the toughest times in her life and now he was doing the same for the students at Union High School. She considered it a privilege to see him in his element. After she experienced what her dad referred to as a reality check, and what she called being broke, she'd given up on her dream of becoming an actress. Instead, she was helping to train up future actors as a drama teacher. It wasn't as glamorous as Hollywood, but she was able to support herself. And the best part. She worked with Micah every day. He hung up the call and placed the receiver down. Hey, sorry about that. Let me lock up and we can go. No problem. His voice was more weary than normal, even for a Friday afternoon. Is everything okay? I bet a lot of the juniors are freaking out about how they did on the SAT last week. Did you have kids lined up out the door to talk to you today? Micah's lips curved up for a split second. You can always tell when I have something on my mind. That was a parent of a student who's having a hard time. Is he or she going to be okay? I hope so. Sighing, he closed the file cabinet behind him and locked it. These kids should be enjoying their classes and having fun with their friends, not acting out. Let me guess, the family's going through some problems. Yes, the parents are separating. I know how painful that can be. He grabbed his messenger bag and coat and headed for the door. Lucy followed him out of the main office building and into the half-empty parking lot. She hopped into Micah's sedan as she did every morning and afternoon when they carpooled to and from work. Although they were no longer neighbors, they had both moved out of their parents' houses, their apartment complexes were within a few blocks of each other. At least the parents sound supportive. That makes a huge difference. I agree. I feel like my hands are tied though. I can talk to the kid, but it's up to them to change. This didn't sound like the optimistic Micah she knew. She squeezed his arm. They will. They'll want to change once you talk to them. It may take some time, but things will turn out okay. He turned in the driver's seat and gave her a curious glance. What makes you so sure? You just gotta have faith that God will work things out. A wise boy taught me that a long time ago. Her words seemed to catch him by surprise. He didn't say anything for a moment, but his eyes brightened as he studied her. You don't say. He was right, too. She narrowed her eyes as soon as she spotted his smug smile. But don't tell him I said so. Chuckling, Micah leaned close and cupped her chin. Too late, loose. He heard every word. The spicy scent of his aftershave coupled with the heat from his hands stole her thoughts. She swallowed hard, trying to make sense of his intense expression. What was happening? Old emotions she had stuffed away for years bubbled to the surface. No, stop. She had a boyfriend now. A kind, sweet man who cared for her and, oh, 
What was his name again? John. He's waiting for us. We better go. Sure thing, he replied, his eyes zeroing in on her mouth. We should go. If she had any brain cells left, she would have broken off their contact right then. Unfortunately, she still couldn't think straight. Only when he dropped his hand and began driving did she give herself permission to breathe again. We're going to your favorite place, right? Right. Lucy turned to face her window, allowing her blonde locks to shield her face from view. Not until they pulled up to the Japanese restaurant twenty minutes later did she dare look at Micah. Thanks for driving, again. You know I have a car, too. I can pick you up and drop you off sometimes. I don't mind being your chauffeur. He paused, a smile playing on his lips. Anyways, I value my life too much to ride in a car with you behind the wheel. I still remember the time you jumped the curb and landed in my parents' front yard. She groaned. This was the Micah she knew, the man who had too much dirt on her. I was sixteen. Don't you dare tell John any stories about my driving. We're still in the honeymoon stage and I don't want to scare him off. Got it, Mikey. Holding up his hand, he pledged, got it. I will not mention your awesome driving skills. You didn't say other topics were off-limits though. Micah David Chan. Ooh, not my middle name, he winced with one hand covering his heart. Anything but that. She rolled her eyes, but couldn't stop herself from grinning. You are so dramatic. It takes one to know one, he winked before getting out of the car. Before she could open the door, he'd done it for her. Thanks. What's up with the chivalrous act today? Nothing's up. He extended a hand to help her out. I'm just making sure you know how you should be treated. Does John open doors for you? He does. She quickened her pace to keep up with his long strides as they walked across the lot. She held down the skirt of her plum-colored sweater dress to prevent it from flying up around her knees. She had a hard time keeping up with Micah in her high-heeled boots, but following him was nothing new, she'd been following in his footsteps for most of her life. You don't have to worry about John. Dad already grilled him. He's passed with flying colors. Micah stopped in his tracks, you introduced him to your parents. Yeah. What's the big deal? You've never brought a guy home before. What makes this one different? She shrugged. I feel more sure about John. And to be honest, I'm tired of dating. I want something real, something lasting like what my parents and your parents have. Marriage takes a lot of work, Lucy. It's not all roses and hallmark cards. It's better to be single and mostly happy than married and miserable. Okay. Micah was as prickly as a cactus today. She knew he was wary of marriage because of what his parents had gone through, but this was taking it a bit far. Of course relationships take work, but they're worth it. Don't you want to get married one day? If I meet the right person. Someone I can see myself committing to for the long haul who feels the same about me. Ouch, the poor guy. She couldn't believe he was still hung up on his high school sweetheart who'd cheated on him. But that was Micah. Strong on the outside, sensitive on the inside. He gave his all, to his family and friends and work, even when he didn't get the same in return. But he'd gotten gun-shy about relationships. As far as she remembered, he ended them before they got too serious, or the girl did so because he wouldn't get serious. Perhaps he just needed some encouragement, or a kick in the behind. It's time to stop feeling sorry for yourself. What happened with Becca, not all girls are like her. There are some great ones out there. The perfect woman is out there for you. He shrugged. Maybe. Maybe. You need to change your attitude and get serious. We're not getting any younger, you know. You just turned 28. I'm well aware of that fact, he smirked as he motioned for her to cross the street with him. 
but you shouldn't settle for any guy just because you want to get married. I'm not settling. John's really great. He reminds me of you actually. So, he's tall and handsome. Micah quipped as he opened the restaurant door. I am not going to feed your ego by answering that question. You just did, Luce, he winked before turning his attention to the restaurant attendant. We're here to meet a friend, he informed the young woman. A tall and handsome man in his late twenties who supposedly resembles me. I cannot believe you said that, Lucy exclaimed as she hit Micah on the arm. She gave the attendant an exasperated smile. Don't mind my brother, he's under a lot of stress. The reservation's for three people and it's under the name, I'm pretty sure I know which table you're at, she cut in with a grin. Right this way. The attendant led them to the back of the candlelit restaurant where a man in a blue dress shirt was sitting at a table for four. When he spotted them, he stood up, revealing a pair of khaki pants. He smiled and waved as they approached. Micah quirked a brow and muttered out of the corner of his mouth, you weren't kidding. Huh. Lucy watched the two men exchange a handshake, and that's when her jaw dropped. She blinked quickly, unsure if she should be amused or concerned at the sight before her. Other than his blonde hair and blue eyes, her boyfriend looked like a carbon copy of Micah. John's outfit, down to his leather belt and brown loafers, matched Micah's. They even parted their hair the same way. She'd never been so sure of anything in her life. Make that two things. One, it was going to be a very interesting evening. Two, she needed to get her head, or at least her eyes, examined because this was too much of a coincidence. The only thing she could do was laugh along with Micah and John, and pray she would get her heart straightened out soon. Chapter 2 March Twelve years ago. Micah Micah stepped up to the ticket window and spoke into the round metal plate of the intercom system. Three kids and one adult for Ice Princess, please. Mikey. He felt a tug on the sleeve of his polo shirt and turned to his right. Lucy glared at him with her hands on her hips as she stood next to their little sisters. What's wrong? I turned 13 last week. Pointing to the movie ticket prices listed on the wall above them, she emphasized her point. Ages 13 and up need an adult ticket. I'm an adult now. Lucy, an adult. Not even close. She might have been two inches taller than when they first met three years ago, thanks to a pair of platform flip-flops, but she was still a child in his book. Her shiny pink lip gloss and the black fishnet tights she wore under a jean skirt made her look more silly than sophisticated. He was surprised she'd managed to sneak both items past her dad. He didn't have the heart to burst her bubble though, she looked so cute, like a firecracker ready to combust if she didn't get her way. Speaking to the attendant again, he corrected his order. Sorry, I meant two kids and two, he shot Lucy a grin, adults. Lucy beamed when he handed her a ticket. My very first adult ticket. I'm going to save this forever. Her expression was priceless. He gently tugged on her jet black braid as they walked to the concession stand. She had finally gotten her dad's blessing to dye her hair and she'd chosen the darkest shade possible. If she had been excited after her trip to the salon, she was beyond ecstatic today. I'm glad you're happy. Let's hope I don't run into anyone I know here. I like hanging out with the three of you, but I sure wish we could watch something else. But our friend said it's a good movie, Hope touted while Lexi nodded in agreement. Why don't you want to watch it? I'm sure it's great, but it's not really my type. Ice skating seems kinda boring. Don't listen to Micah. He's just being a boy, Lucy winked. He'd rather watch a movie about guys in capes who wear their underwear outside of their tights. Her comment started the girls giggling. Micah couldn't help but smile himself. To some 16-year-olds, spending an afternoon at the movies with three, make that two, kids might seem like a chore, but he enjoyed it. He didn't mind the responsibility if it meant putting his new driver's license to use. Having Lucy alone was a plus. 
he could always count on her for some fun conversation topics. Superheroes are always in a hurry. That's why they forget to put on their underwear first. It's a small price to pay to save the day. Lucy shot him a look that made him feel a lot older and a little less cool. Sorry, Mikey, but that's a lame story. Both Hope and Lexi grinned in agreement. So, now I'm lame. Sniffling, Micah put on a sad face. He gestured to the overflowing popcorn maker in front of them. I'm guessing you guys won't want to share snacks with a lame person. Too bad. He placed an order with the attendant, then watched the young girl's eyes grow wide as he held a large tub of popcorn under their noses. They were practically drooling over the rich smell of butter wafting in the air. We don't think you're lame, Micah. Hope exclaimed. Can we have some popcorn? Please. Lexi chimed in. Sure thing. Turning to Lucy, he asked, would you like some, too? Lucy pretended to give his question some thought before answering. I suppose so. But only for your own good. If you ate that all by yourself, you wouldn't be able to fit in the car later and we'd be stuck here all night. That's a good one, Micah laughed. Come on, the movie's starting soon. Let's go get some good seats. He slung one arm around Lucy's shoulder as they walked behind their sisters. He was going to enjoy himself, regardless of the movie choice. His sisters were happy and there was fresh popcorn, what more could he want? They were outside the theater doors when a female voice called out, Micah. He dropped his arm and turned around. Whoa. The last person he expected to see was running up to him. Hey, Becca. What are you doing here? A blonde teenager wearing skinny jeans enveloped him in a hug and stepped back with a smile lighting up her blue eyes. I knew it was you. I'm here with my sister to watch a movie of course. Are these your sisters? One of the most popular girls at school was talking to him. And the way she was touching his arm made his whole body warm up. Was she flirting? Either way, he didn't mind. She could permanently attach herself to him and he'd be fine. He just hoped she didn't think he was lame for watching a kiddie movie. This is my sister Hope and our neighbors, Lucy and Lexi. I drove them here to watch, he lowered his voice in shame, Ice Princess. Totally their idea, not mine. That is so sweet of you. Becca gushed, her hand still on his arm. She gestured to the little girl standing beside her and asked, Do you mind if we sit with you guys? Of course not, I don't think so, Lucy cut Micah off. She shrugged when he gave her a confused look. It's going to be hard to find so many seats together. Now who was the lame one? He didn't know why Lucy was being difficult, but she wasn't getting her way. Not this time. Nothing would stop him from sitting with the prettiest girl in his class. We'll be fine. It's not like this is a Harry Potter movie. I'll find us somewhere to sit. He led the way into the theater, blinking as his eyes adjusted to the darkness. Most of the higher seats were filled, but he spotted an empty row a couple of steps up. He motioned for Becca and her sister to enter first, then followed to ensure he ended up beside his dream girl. Behind him, Lucy directed Hope and Lexi where to sit. Once seated, he turned to his left, expecting to see his sister, instead he saw Lucy next to him. Surprisingly, her pout from earlier had been replaced by an eager grin. These are great seats. She pointed to the wide screen before them. We're right in the middle. Yeah, he agreed. See, you didn't have to worry. The theater lights dimmed. Micah sat back in his seat, balancing the large tub of popcorn on his right armrest so Becca could reach it. Popcorn? Sure, thanks. She reached in and grabbed a handful for her and her sister. Here, I can hold it. Micah inhaled quickly as Becca's soft fingers closed around his hand as she took the tub. The sweet fruity scent of her lotion filled his senses and sent his pulse racing. He'd never been this close to a girl before or held hands with one, 
although it was debatable whether their contact qualified as such. It had been short, but awesome. So awesome, it took him a while to realize the girl sitting on the other side of him was strangely quiet. He caught a glimpse of Lucy's profile as the screen brightened. She was usually a running commentary during previews, critiquing the actors' wardrobes and hairstyles and even their acting skills. Today, however, she stared forward with her arms crossed. The grumpy version of Lucy had returned, this time in full force. What was up with her today? Nudging her with his elbow, he asked, any thoughts about Hermione's outfit? Lips pressed together, she shook her head. What about Ron? When she didn't respond, he tried a different tactic. I really like his hair long. It makes him more handsome, don't you think? She finally turned toward him, her pert nose wrinkled in disgust. Handsome. It's like a mop on his head. He'll never win over Hermione looking like that. Micah didn't know about Ron's prospects, but he at least had won over Lucy for the time being. Ha! I got you to talk. She glared at him, not amused in the least. What happened to sharing your popcorn? Popcorn? So that's what this was about? Sure thing. I'll get you some. No. I don't want any now. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on with you, but you're being a brat. Was it too late to return her adult ticket for a child one? He faced her and lowered his voice. If you can't tell, I'm trying to make a good impression with Becca. There's enough popcorn to go around. If you want, I can buy you another tub. That's not the point. You're supposed to share with me, not her. She spat out the last word like it was poisonous. Never mind. I'm not hungry anymore. It took a few seconds for Micah to make sense of her words. You're supposed to share with me, not her. No, it couldn't be, but there was no other explanation he could think of. Lucy liked him. He clamped his mouth shut to keep his laughter contained. How was he going to let her down? Gently, of course. Getting your heart broken, no matter what the relationship was, always hurt. He'd witnessed heartbreak in his parents' marriage and vowed never to hurt anyone he loved. He did love Lucy, but as a brother loves his kid sister. He leaned close, confiding in her ear. No one will ever take your place in my life, Luce. We go way back, we've got history together. I said I'd always be there for you and I will. Don't forget that, okay? She turned to him, her hazel eyes almost twinkling like stars in the night sky. The scent of her cherry lip gloss filled the space between them. I know, Mikey. Thanks. She placed a quick peck on his cheek and sat back in her seat. Look, the movie's starting. Micah nodded, his thoughts swirling in his head. Lucy had kissed him. Sure, it was nothing, but he'd never had a girl's lips on his face before. He glanced to his right and caught Becca smiling at him. This afternoon was turning out well, really well. Chapter 2 March, Present Day Micah Micah learned there was something worse than being a third wheel, being a seventh wheel. Although he and his parents had been regular guests in the Choi's home over the years, he was not used to tonight's company around the table. Three couples were gathered with him, his parents, Lucy's parents, and Lucy and John. It had been nice of the Choi's to open their home, but he should have declined the invitation. With Hope and Lexi away at college, he was the odd man out. The last single person standing, well, sitting, and it was starting to get uncomfortable. He didn't have the best track record when it came to relationships, that was the one area he lacked faith in. Maybe marriage wasn't in God's plans for him, but every cell in his body wanted what his parents had. If only he could have the good, happy parts and not the hard, sad ones. But seeing how close his mom and dad had gotten over the years, how struggles had built up their trust, he knew you couldn't have the ups without the downs. If only he could find a woman he felt safe enough to go through all of this with. Had Lucy found that with John? Sitting directly across from them, 
he had a prime spot to observe their interactions. If anyone needed a visual explanation for the term PDA, Lucy and John would be it. It was a wonder they could eat, considering the amount of time they stared at each other instead of their plates. Oh, but it did help that they were feeding each other. That's good, isn't it? John remarked about a tofu dish. Hmm, Lucy nodded as she gave him a bite from her plate. Try this one. Micah stuffed some chow mein into his mouth and wondered if they were eating the same oily and salty Chinese takeout meal he was. Had their portions been enhanced with something besides MSG? Endorphins, perhaps. The conversation around the table quieted for a moment and Micah's mom jumped in to fill the void. He had noticed her eyeing the happy new couple as well. As a marriage and family therapist, his mom took interest in relationships of all kinds. She motioned to Lucy and John. So, tell us, how did the two of you meet? Lucy flipped her long blonde hair over her shoulder as she exchanged a smile with John. Do you want to tell the story? You do it. You have a better memory than me. John wrapped his arm around her shoulder and winked. Your memory's fine, just a bit selective, she teased. Turning to everyone, she explained, John thinks we met on a Friday, but I'm sure it was a Monday because I never wear heels on Fridays. I only remember the important parts, John chuckled, like the fact that you had a grade 1 ankle sprain. A sprain which you treated so professionally, I might add. Lucy stared into John's eyes and added, you have very skilled hands. Seriously? Micah winced, feeling his gag reflex kicking into gear. He only had himself to blame for this lovey-dovey business. Those darn four-inch heels. Lucy glared at him, the look on her face a cross between annoyance and surprise. I met John at the hospital, she explained to the others at the table. He treated my sprained ankle after I tripped on the stairs at school. She was my favorite patient that day, John quipped. I couldn't let her go without asking her out. A woman this special doesn't come into your life for no reason. God opened the doors for me and I'm so blessed she said yes. My life hasn't been the same since. Soft murmurs sounded from Mrs. Choi and Mrs. Chan as they smiled their approval. The fathers nodded, but Micah had to admit he was relieved to see some skepticism in Mr. Choi's raised brows. If Lucy was his daughter, he'd be alarmed, too. They barely knew each other, but she had already fallen for John, hard. Young love is so fun, Mrs. Choi mused. Not that old people don't know how to have a good time. It's just different. It's a more carefree kind of love, Micah's mom chimed in, the foundation every couple needs to sustain them when they face hardships later. I always tell my clients how important it is to remember the how and why you fell in love. It's a story you should keep close to your hearts and never grow tired of telling. Micah scowled. Why in the world were their mothers, especially his, tossing around the word love? She was off duty now, she didn't need to be giving marriage advice to Lucy and John. They weren't even close to marriage, to loving one another, were they? He didn't know why the thought bothered him. He'd always known Lucy would grow up and not need him like she used to. She'd meet a man who would take care of her like he had. An unsettled feeling weighed on his chest. He wanted to blame it on heartburn, but he had barely taken a bite of his dinner. The pot stickers he loved eating just didn't taste good today. Maybe it was because he didn't eat them the same way he had as a kid, filling first, skin after, but as an adult he had put those childish ways behind him. He released a long breath. It was also time to leave his childish ways of thinking. He couldn't take care of Lucy forever. Scooting his chair back, he stood up with an apologetic smile. I think I'm gonna head home. I'm not feeling so hungry right now and I have some paperwork to catch up on. Thank you for dinner, Auntie Sam, Uncle Lucas. The mothers fussed over him before letting him carry his dishes and chopsticks to the kitchen. He had placed them in the sink and was turning to leave when Lucy's dad walked in. Even without his police uniform and detective badge on, Mr. Choi carried himself in a manner worthy of respect, or fear. 
That's why Micah had avoided being alone with him a decade ago. Back then he had made some immature, regretful decisions. Worse yet, he'd gotten caught. Thankfully, he had earned Mr. Choi's trust in the years since. Hey, Uncle Lucas. Thanks again for dinner. Sorry, I can't stay. Lucy's dad waved his hand as if dismissing Micah's words. I understand. Before you go though, I wanted to ask you, he lowered his voice, what you think of John. Lucy seems to really like him. It's not easy for me to watch them. It's a little much for me. You too, huh? Leaning against the counter, Micah crossed his arms in a sign of vindication. It's too much too soon if you ask me. Someone should talk to her about taking it slow. Mr. Choi sighed. You know Lucy. She doesn't listen to anyone, especially not her old man. John seems like a good guy though from what I can tell. He kind of reminds me of you. Even tonight both he and John wore similar button-down shirts and dark jeans. I've heard that before. I'll be honest, the older man continued, I don't like to admit my little girl is 25 now and able to make her own choices, including choosing who she wants to date. I wish I could take care of her forever, but I can't. Part of being a parent is learning to let go. He narrowed his eyes at Micah. I get the feeling you're having a hard time letting go, too. Micah shrugged. I know she's not a kid or a teenager anymore, someone who needs me to look after her. She's a grown woman. A strong, successful one. Sweet and fun and gorgeous, too. His chest tightened. Wait, where did that last thought come from? I suppose it's time we let Lucy live her own life, Mr. Choi pondered out loud. We can be there for her when she needs us, but we need to play a different role. Yeah. Micah had to force the word out. The last thing he wanted was to change his role. He had vowed to be there for Lucy, but she obviously hadn't promised the same. John had replaced him, not just in her life, but in her heart. The realization crushed him in an unexpected way. Perhaps that's why he had never gotten close to a woman. He'd had girlfriends, but no one he had wanted to settle down with. All these years he thought he'd avoided commitment because of how his parents' separation had affected him. But it was more than that. The realization hit him, plaguing him like a fly that had been buzzing in his ear for years, but one he'd ignored. A foolish, yet hopeful yearning settled in the pit of his stomach. Could it be? The fierce protectiveness he had for Lucy, the annoyance and disgust he felt seeing her dote on John, these were all symptoms of something. For a counselor who was so good at analyzing others, he had an awful time understanding himself. But now that he was being honest about his feelings, he knew what was wrong. He had a serious condition that affected his heart in the worst way. Whether there was a cure or not, he didn't care. All he knew was this, no one could take Lucy's place. He was, and always had been, in love with the girl next door. Chapter 3 May Nine years ago Lucy Lucy plopped onto a white leather couch in the hotel lobby and kicked off her high heels. The well-lit area was empty except for a woman at the check-in desk and a uniformed bellhop. Hiding out in the bathroom for the past hour had worked in her favor, everyone she knew had left, including her girlfriends and their dates. Several of them had offered to take her home, but she had declined. The evening was already bad enough without having to be a third wheel. Dialing her cell phone with one hand, she wiped away her tears with the other. Traces of black mascara from her palm stained her shimmery lilac gown, but she didn't care. Junior prom was over and so was her love life. Her date had dumped her, and the worst part. He hadn't even kissed her yet. Come on, pick up. Hello? She'd never been so happy to hear that familiar male voice, one which had grown considerably deeper the past year. Tonight, it sounded groggy and a little annoyed. Was Micah sleeping already? No matter. He always came through for her. Mikey. I need a ride. 
if I don't make it home before midnight, my dad's gonna freak. The only reason she was even out this late was thanks to the GPS tracker app her dad had installed on her phone. She could almost feel his virtual eyes watching her every move. If she didn't get moving soon, he'd call his cop buddies to come get her. And that would be more embarrassing than her current predicament. Can you come get me? I just fell asleep, he grumbled. What happened to your date? Doesn't he have a car? Brett spent half the night dancing with other girls. I told him I'd find my own way home. Fresh tears burned Lucy's eyes. I want to go home. Please. What a jerk. He sounded more awake now, angry even. I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. I know, I know. The guy sounded shallow and conceited. I have no idea what you saw in him. That made two of them. I should have listened to you. Yep, you should have. She rolled her eyes, hating how satisfied Micah sounded right now and how wrong she'd been. I'll say it, you were right. I should have looked at his character and not his looks, like the Bible says. Well, at least you know his true nature now. Sometimes we have to learn the hard way what's best for us. His tone softened with his next words. Okay, don't move, loose. I'll be right there. Thanks, Mikey. True to his word, Micah showed up twenty minutes later. He entered the hotel in a pair of faded jeans and a black t-shirt, his eyes scanning the area. She waved to him, relief flooding her weary body. With her silver strappy sandals in hand, she ran to him, not stopping until she was in his arms. Her face buried in his chest, she let her tears fall freely. When she caught her breath, she murmured, thanks for coming. He rested his chin on her head as he held her. His fingers toyed with her hair, which had been in an updo earlier, but now fell around her bare shoulders in loose curls. Anytime, loose. I'm glad you called me. Sniffling, she pulled back to smile at him. She found she had to crane her neck to meet his gaze. At 19, Micah was taller than her male classmates, and more muscular, too. It had been a semester since he'd come home from college and he seemed older, more mature. She felt grown up next to him, or maybe it was because of her dress. The gown's halter top led down to an open back where Micah's hands were caressing her. Did he see her differently, too? He had grown quiet, his dark brown eyes sweeping across her face and down her body. He suddenly released her, leaving traces of warmth on her bare skin where his fingers had been. You look, amazing, he faltered, almost as if he couldn't catch his breath. Your dad let you leave the house looking like this. Nope. She smirked, he was still at work when I left. Her shoulders dropped in disappointment as she remembered her evening. But it doesn't matter how I look. Brett didn't care, and the prom was a total flop. What he thinks doesn't matter. You may not believe it now, but not all guys are like him. Someday you'll meet a guy who will like you for you, regardless of what you're wearing. Someone who won't leave you for another girl. At least you're not a jerk. I bet college boys are so much more mature. Chuckling, he swung his arm around her shoulder and led her out of the hotel. That's not always the case. I think most guys don't grow up until maybe their mid or late twenties. I just happen to be the exception. Okay, I take it back, she ribbed, elbowing him in the side. College boys are definitely not more mature. Hey, don't forget who dragged himself out of bed to come drive you home. Fine, she obliged with a smile, I guess you have your moments. He opened the passenger door for her, then took his seat behind the driver's wheel. He turned on the heater when she started shivering. Lucy leaned back in her seat, feeling content for the first time that night. She turned toward him, gazing at the profile that had grown more angular and defined over time. Yup, Micah was definitely more of a man than Brett. And manlier than any boy at school. 
Her pulse raced as she zeroed in on Micah's mouth. Why hadn't she thought of this before? She had the perfect accomplice for her plan. Here we are. In a matter of minutes, Micah turned into their court and parked on the street in his usual spot. The adjoining sidewalk led to both of their driveways and up to their houses, which were dark except for the porch lights. Come on, I'll walk you to the door. You'll feel better after a good night's sleep. She grabbed his arm to stop him from exiting. Hey, Mikey. I know something that will make me feel better now. What is it? I need your help though. Huh? What are you thinking? I was hoping to get my first kiss from Brett tonight, but that's not gonna happen now. Do you think, she wet her lips, you could kiss me? He paused before he began laughing, his hand over his eyes. When she didn't join in, he quickly sobered up. Do you realize what you're asking? You want me to kiss you? Yes, she nodded adamantly. She couldn't make out all his features in the darkness, but she heard the shock in his voice. Was the offer that horrible? Is there something wrong with me? Why does no guy want me? No, Luce, that's not it. He took her clenched hands and held them to his chest. There is nothing wrong with you. You're an amazing girl, er, woman. Any guy would be lucky to have you in his life. Then, why won't you kiss me? He released her hands into her lap, giving them an awkward pat. You're like my sister. I don't want things to be, he paused, weird between us. A kiss is a big deal, especially your first one. But I'm sixteen and I've never even kissed a boy. It's embarrassing. I'm sure you had your first kiss by now. It doesn't matter what I did. So, you did have your first kiss before you were sixteen, she accused, crossing her arms. I knew it. Even you got a girl to kiss you. What do you mean by that, he asked with a bit of indignation mixed with humor. Even I got a girl to kiss me. Is that so surprising? I happen to be a very good kisser. Ha, she scoffed. Thinking so doesn't make it so. If you're so sure, why don't you prove it? Kiss me. Laughing, he shook his head. You're smart, Luce, I'll give you that. You're not going to let this drop, are you? Nope. Not when he was so close to giving in. He threw up his hands. Fine, I'll kiss you. But just a short one. And just this once. Yes. Lucy raised her hands in a small victory dance. Thank you, Mikey. You're the best big brother anyone could ask for. Okay, that's a weird thing to say right now. Let's just do this. She sat up and leaned forward until she was a couple of inches away from his face. The smell of soap filled her senses, and with it a scent that could only be described as masculine. Her palms grew cold and clammy even while her cheeks felt blazing hot. Maybe this was a crazy idea after all. But how else would she get her first kiss? Her dad forbid her to date and the one time she got to go out with a boy, he dumped her. This was the only way. And thankfully, the safest way. Micah would be gentle and patient with her like he always was. So, which way do I lean? I mean, do we both go to the right or the left and do we keep our mouths closed or, definitely closed? And the right is fine. He nodded with a wry smile. Don't think so much. Just close your eyes and I'll find you. Okay. She did as he said, squeezing her eyes shut and holding herself still. Her heart was pounding so hard, she was sure he could hear it. What if she fainted? but not before she got kissed. There was no way she was going to miss, oh. It was happening. One of Micah's hands was under her chin, tilting it up. Next, she felt his warm, minty breath tickling her lips right before his mouth landed fully on hers. Wow, he wasn't kidding. He was a good kisser. His touch was so soft and tingly, 
it spread through her entire body like a ray of sunshine, or a beam of light. Even with her eyes closed, she sensed a bright white light cutting through the windshield. What was that? Micah pulled back, breaking off their kiss with a light smacking sound. It was barely audible compared to the pounding coming from the passenger side window. Lucy pouted, her lips yearning for more. Why did Micah stop? Wait, who was that yelling, Micah? Get out of the car with your hands up. It's your dad, Micah shouted, scrambling for the car handle. He saw us kissing. I am so dead. She turned and came face to face with a police officer glaring into her window. Oh man, Micah was right. They were in so much trouble. Lucy, Chapter 3 May, Present Day Lucy Having fun yet? Lucy glanced at the other side of the gymnasium door where Micah stood. The two of them had volunteered to chaperone the last dance of the school year together. He had traded in his blue dress shirt for a short-sleeved one with a tropical leaf print. So much fun. I've always wanted to stand outside a smelly gym on a Friday night and be a bouncer. He chuckled. I can't see you, but I bet you're rolling your eyes right now. She held up the flashlight she was using to check student IDs and placed it under her chin. When the beam of light hit her face, she raised her eyes to the night sky. You guessed right. It could be a lot worse. Last year I had to stay inside most of the evening. That was uncomfortable. You wouldn't believe some of the movements the kids call dancing these days. Makes me glad I'm no longer in high school. That's the irony of it all. We graduated and yet we decided to come back. She switched off the flashlight with a sigh. Well, at least one of them had made the choice. If she had her way, she'd still be living in Los Angeles and looking for an acting job or a modeling gig. Although now that she'd been teaching for a year, she couldn't imagine giving it up. Micah had been right, God did have a hand in working things together for good. He had given her a job of doing something she was passionate about. I am grateful though for this job. It pays the bills and it's fun. Thank you again for helping me get it. I didn't do much really. Your resume spoke for itself. Not every drama teacher can say they had a role in a blockbuster movie. A minor role in a blockbuster movie, she laughed. Although I did get to meet Chris Pratt. That was cool. He's as funny in person as he is on screen. Do you miss it? The acting. A cool breeze blew, causing goosebumps to rise along her bare skin. She ran her hands up and down her arms to warm herself. Her sarong dress with its orange, red, and white hibiscus flowers was more cute than practical, but she'd wanted to fit in with the dance's Hawaiian theme. The dress also held so many memories of her favorite vacation destination, some of which Micah had been a part of. She sensed his eyes on her as he waited for an answer. Yes and no. I miss the action and excitement of being on set, but I don't miss the long days. And I most certainly don't miss the rejections. I'm sure those weren't easy. He paused. You never talked much about your time there after you came home. Your Instagram made it look so glamorous. It wasn't always like that, was it? You followed me on Instagram. You never told me that. That's what the little people do when their friends go off to become big movie stars. Haha, <laughs> you're funny, she smirked. Knowing Micah had kept track of her while she was gone sent a warm feeling through her chest. When she'd moved to Hollywood, they'd parted on bad terms, mostly because she had gone against his, and everyone else's, advice. Pursuing acting hadn't been the wisest choice, but she didn't regret the opportunities she'd received, nor the lessons they came with. Being on her own away from her family and friends had forced her to rely on God. It also made her appreciate her loved ones more, even her dad and Micah who could be a tad overprotective. She released a long breath before confiding in him. It was actually a pretty lonely time for me. 
I guess I don't talk about it much because you and everyone else were right. It's hard making it as an actor. It's even harder when you don't look like most of the actors in Hollywood. I was never white enough or Asian enough. Is that why you dyed your hair? My agent thought it would help. That's how I landed that movie role. The part was for an all-American girl. They did let me keep my real eye color. I tried not to take it personally. It's just something I had to do to fit in, like a job requirement. But you're not in that line of work anymore. Why do you still keep it blonde? She shrugged. At first it was because I didn't want to damage my hair by coloring it again. And then it was because I met John. And you wanted to match with him. She cringed. The idea hadn't sounded so ridiculous in her head, but now that Micah was saying it out loud, it was a bit crazy. But she'd never admit that to him. Of course not. I'm not one of those crazy women who makes her boyfriend wear matching outfits. I just figured that was the me he fell for. And the blonde Lucy seems to have a lot more luck with guys than the black-haired one, wouldn't you agree? What about the brown-haired Lucy? The real you? What about her? Honestly, it's been so long since I was a brunette, I don't even remember what it was like. I was 12 when I first colored it. 13, actually. He paused. I remember that girl. I kind of miss her. Where was this coming from? Before Lucy could ask, a group of teenagers approached them. Hi guys. Micah greeted each student by name, checked their IDs, and waved them inside. Have fun and behave yourselves. A couple of the boys, football players by the looks of their muscular builds, gave Lucy an appreciative once-over as they lined up to walk through the doors. One of them called out, cool dress, Miss Choi. Thank you, Donnie, she smiled. Great job again on today's improv scene. Thanks. Even in the near darkness, Lucy knew she'd embarrassed her student by the way he muttered his response. His friends didn't help the matter as they slapped him on the back and poked fun at his acting skills. Hey, she admonished, you guys better be nice to him so he'll remember you when he makes it big one day. He's got talent. Don't let them tell you otherwise, Donnie. I appreciate it, Miss Choi, Donnie replied in a louder voice. He gave her a quick nod before he followed his friends into the gym. Micah walked over to her with respect on his face. You're really good at what you do. Donnie's changed since he started taking your class. He was in my office a lot last year and I've seen what a difference drama has made in his life. Thanks. I understand now why you're so passionate about your job. These kids are really something. They can be tougher and more honest than any movie critic, but they're so endearing. I'm glad I came back home. This job may not be as glamorous as acting or modeling, but it's definitely worthwhile. Being able to impact someone like that is far better than any Academy Award you could win. I know. She ducked her head. He'd been right all along. It's funny how the things I thought were important before don't matter much now. I should have listened to you, Micah. It was a waste of time trying to make it big. Go ahead and say it, I told you so. Lucy, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm sorry I made you feel that way before. We've all done things we wished we hadn't. It's hard enough living life without having someone come down on you for your mistakes. God doesn't condemn us anymore either. We've been set free because of the cross. It's time we both lived that truth. This was a different Micah than the one she'd grown up with. His tone was so gentle and gracious, it cut through her fear and shame. She met his gaze and smiled. He really was a good guy. Under different circumstances, he'd be someone she could fall for. She had fallen for him time and time again over the years, but those instances were nothing compared to now. They were both older and wiser and a relationship finally seemed within reach, but she was with John now. Funny how life worked out like that. 
She wrapped her arms around herself, wishing she could protect her heart the same way. Attempting to lighten the mood, she joked, listen to yourself. You really are wise beyond your years, Mikey. I guess God's been teaching me some things recently. Hey, you're shivering. He took her flashlight and put it, along with his, in his pants pocket. Then he wrapped an arm around her shoulders and pulled her close. Come on, let's go in. Most of the students have arrived. We can hang out inside at the entrance. Okay, she agreed even though she wished they could stay outside, just the two of them, a little longer. There was so much weighing on her heart and mind, so much she wanted to say. But he was already ushering her through the gym doors and into the warm, stuffy air inside. The stench of wet socks assaulted her senses. Despite the familiar smell, the gym looked and felt different tonight. Colorful flashing lights bounced off the dark walls and the bass of a popular hip-hop song blasted through the large speakers on either side of the DJ booth. The kids had done an excellent job of turning the gym into a tropical paradise, complete with a palm tree silhouette backdrop for photos. Most of the attendees on the dance floor, as well as those sitting on the bleachers, wore floral shirts and plastic lays. Micah spoke into her ear over the pounding music. Brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it? Lucy was surprised to find Micah's arms still around her, but she wasn't complaining. Of the trip our families took together to Kauai? I was actually thinking about your junior prom. My prom, didn't we vow never to speak of that? Some things, like my dad's face pressed up against your car window, are best left in the past. She pretended to shudder. That was one of the worst decisions she'd ever made, and unfortunately, she dragged Micah into it. If it weren't for my mom, I'm sure you would have gotten locked up that night. You'd have a criminal record and would never have been able to become a counselor. It was a kiss, loose. But you were an adult and I was a minor. Okay, so the circumstances were a bit shady, he shot her a grin, but it was just a kiss. Just a kiss. Even without the aggravating circumstances, her dad's words, not hers, that kiss was high on her list of most memorable experiences. It was the first time I ever kissed a guy. It was a big deal to me. He cocked his head and studied her, his expression serious. I wasn't implying it didn't mean anything. I meant there was nothing your dad could have charged me with. All he could do was lecture me and make me promise never to pursue you. He did what? Is that what you guys talked about after I got sent to my room? Nodding, he gave her a tight-lipped smile. He also swore me to secrecy to never tell you about our pact, but it's been nine years and we're both adults now. A lot's changed since then. A lot had changed. Her stomach fluttered under his gaze. She swallowed hard, her heart pounding along with the dance song's fast rhythm. She hadn't had a reaction like this since, she couldn't recall when, but it wasn't recently. John never made her feel this way, she realized sadly. Only Micah did. The boy she'd been in love with ever since she moved next door. But could she tell him? Micah, their attention shifted as the music suddenly changed tempo. The DJ took to the mic and announced, we're taking it back in time and slowing things down now with the Beach Boys. The cheerful guitar intro to Wouldn't It Be Nice played over the speakers, followed by one single drum hit. Micah had dropped his arm from her shoulder and turned to face her. He leaned down and asked with a hopeful expression, yes. What is it? I, I need to tell you something. The DJ continued, cutting her off. This song goes out to a special teacher and woman here tonight. A Lucy, Lucy's ears perked up and her eyes zeroed in on the stage where the DJ was talking to a tall man in a blue Hawaiian print shirt and khakis. Oh my goodness, John. What was he doing here? Wasn't he supposed to be at the hospital? Lucy Choi. Where are you, Lucy? The DJ gazed out into the crowd of teenagers who were now cheering wildly. John has something he wants to ask you. What, 
No, this can't be happening, Lucy managed to squeeze out through her dry mouth. John couldn't possibly be, oh, but he was. With the help of the students nearby who were pointing her out, he was making his way over. He sank to one knee before her and presented her with a diamond ring. All she could think about was how he'd asked to see her left hand the other week. Why hadn't she caught on to his plan? What was she supposed to do now? And Micah, where was he? She glanced around the sea of faces until her gaze landed on those familiar dark brown eyes. He'd been edged out by some female students who were shrieking in excitement at the pending proposal. John's proposal to her. What was she to do? If she ever needed the Lord's guidance, now was it. She said a quick prayer and hoped once again that God would work everything out. Chapter 4 July, six years ago. Micah. Mikey, isn't it amazing here? Micah opened his eyes and turned to his right. The sun seemed to shine stronger in Hawaii than in California, causing him to squint even with his sunglasses on. His and Lucy's family had arrived on the island of Kauai early that morning. As soon as they had checked into their hotel, the kids had rushed to the pool. Their parents on the other hand were resting in their rooms. He'd planned on relaxing while Lexi and Hope, both now thirteen and capable swimmers, entertained themselves for a while. Lucy sat beside him with a bottle of sunscreen in her hands. The sparkle in her hazel eyes reflected the enthusiasm in her voice. So much for catching up on sleep. She was too excited to keep quiet, but he didn't blame her. It is amazing. The sky is bluer, the air is cleaner, and the ocean waters warm. I thought the beaches back home were nice, but you can't beat the weather here. Or the view, Lucy added with a giddy tone. She sighed with pleasure as she scanned the pool area. She kicked off her flip-flops and lifted her legs onto the reclining chair. There are so many good-looking guys. I know where I'm going to hang out all week. Micah sat up on his recliner and lowered his shades. What the, Lucy Samantha Choi? What do you think you're doing? I'm putting sunscreen on. You know how easily I burn. He raised a brow. Sure. Her paler complexion did require more sun protection than most Asians, but she was going overboard on the application. More specifically, the manner of application. She'd raised the hem of her cotton cover up to her hips, revealing a lot of skin in the process. Sure, it was appropriate swimwear, but when had she started acting so, sexy? Lucy was only 18, but something had changed since she graduated high school. Maybe it was the fact that she'd been discovered by a modeling agency a few months ago. The coy smile on her face resembled the one from her first print ad. You're not doing an ad for sunscreen. Tone it down. You're attracting attention. She shot him a wide-eyed glare. That's what I'm trying to do, she murmured in exasperation. Ooh, I think the guy in the orange swim trunks is looking over here. Quick, Mikey help me. Groaning, he took the bottle she handed him. I don't want any part of this. What if your dad comes down and sees you flirting with a strange guy? He's going shopping with my mom later, so they won't be back for a while. And this guy's not strange. He looks perfectly normal, and perfectly adorable. She undid the belt of her cotton cover-up and let it fall to the chair. Brushing her long black hair to one side, she turned so her back faced Micah. Can you put some sunscreen on my shoulders and back? He swallowed hard. What happened to the innocent black one-piece she used to wear? Today's bright pink bikini left little to the imagination and was making heads turn. Several young men in the area had noticed Lucy. Their wandering eyes reminded him of the guys he'd met in college who only had one thing on their minds, and it wasn't an education. Lucy had no idea what she was asking for. He reached over and yanked her cover-up around her shoulders. This isn't a good idea. Micah, you're not my dad. Stop acting like one, she demanded as she shook off his hands. But I am your big brother and I'm here to protect you. 
I don't need your protection, she huffed. I can't wait to go to college. I'll be far away at UCLA where no one can tell me what to do. He was afraid of that. There's still time to switch schools. You don't have to go 300 miles away. She turned to face him. I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to live near Hollywood so I can start acting. I have places to go, Micah, things to do, people to meet. I want to make it big. I'm going to make it big. Wanting something and actually achieving it are two very different things. It's not easy to become a movie star. If it were, everyone would be doing it. Her jaw dropped. Have you been talking to my dad? Why do you both think I won't make it? I thought you of all people would be on my side. I am on your side, Luce. I'll always be on your side, he insisted. Why can't you be happy with what you have? You've got a great family, you have friends back at home. You could just as easily do some acting at the community theater or more modeling in San Francisco. Why do you want to go so far away? I'm not like you, Mikey. I want to explore what's out there. It's something I need to do. That's the thing I don't get. If you stay close to home, you'll be near all the people you love and who love you. That's what matters the most. How can you not see that? You chose to follow in your parents' footsteps and go to Berkeley. You want to be close to your family, I don't. At least not for a while, she shrugged. We're just different. That doesn't mean one of us is more right. He'd heard enough. He always thought Lucy was immature. How could she not take family seriously? Besides God, family was the most important thing in his life. You're right. We are different. I appreciate my family. You take yours for granted. Lucy's cheeks flushed a bright pink shade that rivaled her bikini. How dare you say that? I lost my mom, Micah. I miss her every day. All I have left are her photos and her wedding dress. I don't even remember her voice anymore. Part of the reason I want to go to L.A. is so I can spend more time with my grandma and my mom's extended family. I do value family, more than you know. She swiped away the tears falling down her face, then gathered her belongings together. I'm going up to my room. Can you watch out for Lexi? He stared at her for a moment as her words sunk in. She wasn't as selfish as he thought. Even still, she had a lot of growing up to do. Maybe being on her own would help her do that. He couldn't protect her forever. Nodding, he placed his sunglasses back on. Yeah, of course. Thanks, she uttered before turning to go. A pit formed in his stomach as he sensed a shift in their relationship. For the first time, he allowed a distance to grow between them. It was time she paved her own way, including facing the consequences that came with her decisions. Chapter 4 July, Present Day Micah Micah stood on one side of the doorway and peeked into the classroom. Although it was summer vacation, he and a group of volunteers were helping at a church-sponsored academic camp for underprivileged elementary kids. This was his third year overseeing the registration table and Lucy's first year teaching drama, but she was already fast becoming one of the more popular teachers. He observed the boys and girls as they practiced a skit under her direction. The sound of laughter spilled out of the room, making him smile. She was a natural at teaching and acting, and as he was discovering, breaking his heart. It had been two months since she accepted John's proposal. He still couldn't believe the woman he was in love with had on another man's engagement ring. Did you get the headcount for today, Micah? The kitchen staff needs to know how many snacks to prepare. He turned around to see his mom with a clipboard in her hands. She wore the same bright yellow shirt he and all the volunteers were wearing. Her smile made the corners of his own mouth curve up, seeing her happy always made his day. There had been a time long ago when she never smiled, but those days were rare now. His parents were in a good place. He admired, even envied, their marriage. Like his mom and dad, 
he and Lucy had started off as friends. They, however, were still friends. Oh, they had crossed the line once with an ill-timed kiss, but nothing more. At least not outright. Theirs was a relationship of unspoken words and unfulfilled longings. The situation was becoming clearer now, but also more troubling. How was he supposed to win her over when she was ready to marry someone else? Micah, are you okay? His mom had walked up to him by now and placed a palm against his forehead. Are you sick? Mom, please, I'm not a kid anymore. He shook his head and took a step back. The hurt in his mom's face made him regret his response. I'm fine, I just haven't been sleeping well. You were asking about the headcount? He checked his own clipboard and relayed the final number to his mom. Do you need anything else? No, that's all, thanks. She paused, her attention drawn to the classroom where Lucy was teaching. The two of you have been through a lot together. How do you feel about the engagement? It's sure to change your friendship with Lucy, if it hasn't already. To be honest, I don't know what to think. I didn't ask what you think, Mrs. Chan chided him, I asked how you feel. You can talk to me, counselor to counselor. He cracked a small smile. He never could skirt the issue of feelings when it came to his mom. I guess I feel concerned and frustrated. And powerless. Powerless? Why? Because I want to stop her from marrying the wrong man, but I can't. She narrowed her eyes at him. Why is John the wrong man? Because he's not me, he wanted to answer. But before he could say anything, the school bell rang to signal the end of class. The students began piling out of the room, their voices blending together in an animated chorus. Micah and his mom stepped to the side to let them pass. A sea of heads barely waist-high glanced up at him as they walked by. One girl with black braids stopped in front of him with a curious expression. She looked him up and down before asking, Are you the man Miss Choi is going to marry? She showed us her diamond ring and she said she's marrying someone tall and handsome. With her arms crossed against her chest, the third or fourth grader craned her neck to study him. You're tall and handsome. Uh, he is, isn't he? Micah's mom jumped. I'm his mom. The girl's mouth formed a big O as she looked from Micah to his mom and back again. Cool. If he marries Miss Choi, then you'll be her mom, too. I would be her mother-in-law, yes. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? She seemed to direct her answer at Micah, but her next statement was meant for the little girl. You should get going to your next class, sweetie. You don't want to be late. Oh yeah. Bye. Bye, Micah managed to call out to the girl's back as she ran to catch up with her friends. That was precious, his mom grinned. You seem to have made an impression on her. Shaking his head, he chuckled, I don't know what just happened. I'd call it a reality check. Kids are good at speaking their minds. The important part is being able to hear their nuggets of wisdom. So, back to my question. Why isn't John the right man for Lucy? Or better yet, who do you think is the right man for her? Uh, he hated being on the receiving end of such probing questions, this was the reason why he was the counselor and not the counselee. I just think she should be with someone who knows her well. She nodded thoughtfully. As well as you do. Micah swallowed hard, all the while trying to keep a straight face. He knew his mom was a good therapist but come on, she was practically reading his mind. If there was ever a time to implement the defense mechanism of avoidance, it was now. Don't you need to give the headcount to the kitchen crew so they can prepare the snacks? Oh yes, right. I better go, she said as she checked her watch. We'll continue this conversation later, okay? She gave him a sly smile and walked away. What was that all about? He appreciated his mom's concern, but he was thankful to not be discussing this issue further. There were some things a grown man did not need to tell his mother, even though she seemed to know too much already. And that young girl, she was something else. 
He was still pondering her words when Lucy stuck her head out of the classroom door. Hey, Mikey, you're just the man I need. Huh? He was. What about John? She walked out with a couple of plastic containers full of costumes and props. Can you help me carry this stuff to my car? I'm done for the day. Yeah, of course. He blinked and returned to reality as he took the bins from her. Micah to the rescue, as always. If only someone else could help him out of this mess he was in. He waited for Lucy to lock up the room before following her to the parking lot. How was class? Is it different from teaching high schoolers? Totally. The younger ones have an easier time expressing their emotions. They don't hold back as much since they're not as concerned about what other people think. He nodded. That makes sense. Peer pressure doesn't play as big a factor until one nears adolescence. Spoken like a true counselor. She shifted the container in her hand to her hip as she opened the trunk of her sedan. These kids also do improv really well. They got the, yes, and, rule right away. He set the bins down and closed the trunk shut. Yeah, I saw that part of your class today. They were really funny and clever with the ideas they suggested. Yeah, they're hilarious. She grinned, and he found himself mesmerized by it. He'd always thought Lucy was pretty, but in that moment, she stole his breath away. The long lashes framing her hazel eyes, her high cheekbones and those full, pink lips he longed to kiss again, he could stare at her all day. But it was more than that. He saw the beauty of her heart, the care she took in drawing her students out of their shells and the adventurous spirit that fueled her passion for acting and now for teaching. She was so full of life. He even felt more alive when he was around her. So much so that he thought of the craziest plan to reveal his feelings. You know what, I'd like to try an improv right now. Do you mind? Micah Chan wants to do some acting. Who are you and what did you do with my brother? He winced and vowed to put an end to this sibling talk. That's exactly why he came up with this crazy idea. Him act? That was about as likely as him playing hooky from work. But he would do it if it meant getting Lucy to think about him as more than a brother. I'm right here. You always said I should try new things and be more open-minded. Here's my attempt at doing just that. Humor me, will you? Squinting against the sunlight, she looked up at him and asked, All right. Do you want to go first, or should I? I can. He rubbed his palms together and cleared his throat. His mind suddenly went blank. Uh, I don't know where to start. Just pick a topic and make a statement about it. It can be about anything. How big a tree is, what you had for breakfast or, she glanced down, how much you love your shorts. My shorts. There was nothing particularly interesting about his faded cargo shorts. Chuckling, she offered another idea. Okay, no shorts. How about using the one I gave the kids today, the ocean is full of fish. Fish? He could work with that. Yes, and some of them are handsome. Handsome fish? She shook her head in dismay. Colorful maybe, but handsome. Come on, go with it. You're supposed to say yes, and, now you sound like the teacher, she smirked. Yes, and, one of them, she pointed dramatically to the far end of the lot, is swimming toward us. Yes, and he's holding up a sign. Yes, and he's excited to tell us something. Yes, and he's turning into a man. She gasped and placed her hands on her cheeks. Yes, and he throws away the sign because he can talk. Good one. Micah liked the direction they were going. Yes, and he has a secret he wants to reveal. Yes, and he's going to tell us before he turns back into a merman. He took a deep breath, ready to share all that was on his heart and mind. He said a quick and earnest prayer for God to go before him in this conversation. Yes, and he hopes you will listen to him with an open mind. His solemn tone must have caught her attention. She took a step forward to close the gap between them. 
This is real. Is there something you want to tell me? Yes. I probably should have said something before, but part of me didn't even realize what was going on until recently. Okay, well, you know you can tell me anything. We're family. Family, right. That was part of the problem. Was it too late? Could Lucy ever see him as anything more than the older brother he'd been for the past fifteen years? Beads of sweat gathered on his forehead, whether from nerves or the midday sun, he wasn't sure. The thing is. I can't let you marry John. You can't let me marry John, she repeated as a statement instead of a question. That's the big secret you wanted to tell me? Yes. I see. Her calm demeanor confused him. Why aren't you disagreeing with me? You hate it when I tell you what to do. I've learned the benefit of listening to others, especially to you. You've always had my best interests at heart. Even my dad wants what's best for me, although the way he says things can sometimes come across as controlling. I do appreciate both of you looking out for me. What a relief. He had been expecting an all-out war with Lucy, but she was taking his advice in stride. She had matured from the young stubborn girl he knew years ago. Great. So, you're not going to marry John. That's a relief. I didn't say I wouldn't, but why are you so opposed to the idea? It's too fast for one thing. You've known each other for what, six months? He'd known Lucy for fifteen years, and he only recently realized his feelings for her. How could she or John be so sure already? How do you know he's the right guy? We're talking about a lifetime commitment here. I'm not marrying him tomorrow, Mikey. I told him I preferred a long engagement. He's fine with that. Oh. Then why the rush to get engaged? Well, his mom's health isn't well. She wants to see him settle down before she, she winced, isn't here to witness it. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you guys plan this for her? Actually, I had no idea he was going to propose. My mind was so wrapped up in the last play we had before school let out that I didn't question why he asked for my ring size. She shrugged. It doesn't matter though. I mean, we'd get engaged eventually. The timeline just moved up. Micah had trouble getting the words out, but he had to ask. So, you love him? Lucy's brow quirked. She stuck her hands into the back pockets of her jean skirt and chewed on her lower lip. Her expression turned bashful. I haven't told him I love him, if that's what you're asking. I've never told anyone that before. But I do like him a lot. And he loves me. It's just a matter of time before I feel the same. A matter of time. He didn't need to hear Lucy's matter-of-fact tone to know how unromantic, even pathetic, this sounded. Why are you doing this, Lucy? Why did you say yes? I, her gaze fell to the ground. We were standing in front of half the school, Mikey. I couldn't turn him down. All the kids were watching us and he was so excited when he pulled the ring out. I know all too well what it feels like to be rejected. I couldn't do that to John, especially not in public. He sucked in a breath, feeling like he'd been punched in the gut. That was the last reason he expected her to give. The compassion in Lucy's eyes softened his heart. He didn't think he could love her more, but his heart swelled with pride. I don't know what to say. That was very kind and selfless of you. But you can't marry him because you feel sorry for him. What kind of marriage would that be? Isn't that what love is? Giving of yourself for someone else's sake. I'm making John and his mom happy. Marrying him is the right thing to do. Lucy, it's not your job to make anyone happy. We're all responsible for ourselves. What about you? Would you be happy if you married him? She paused. I wouldn't be unhappy. Anyways, it's not just about me. I'm trying to think of other people. For once in my life, I want to do the mature thing. I want to do what you do, watch out for other people and take care of them. That is what he strove to do in life, 
but never to this extreme. I appreciate your sacrificial spirit, but this is a bad idea. Do you know what happens when you keep on giving and giving? You burn out. A marriage is supposed to be a partnership. It's a mutual give and take. It will be in time. Blinking back tears, she offered a quivering smile. Don't make it harder for me than it already is. I need your support, Mikey. Please. He wanted to take her by the shoulders and shake some sense into her, instead he stepped back. How could he say no to her? He sighed, regretting his next word as soon as it left his lips, fine. Chapter 5 October Two years ago Lucy I can't make it tonight for dinner, Mom. Something came up. Lucy cringed, knowing how sad her excuse sounded. She leaned against the doorframe of her parents' study where her mom was painting by the window. I need to buy a pair of slacks in case I have an interview next week. Her mom lifted her paintbrush from the canvas and turned around with a pained expression. Lucy, you can't avoid Micah forever. You came back from LA almost a month ago. It's time you saw him. But mom, he hates me. We haven't spoken since my graduation. That was a year and a half ago. He clearly doesn't want to see me or talk to me. It would just make dinner weird if I went. What's weird is the two of you pretending you don't care about each other. He does care, that's why he reacted so strongly when you didn't move back after college. It doesn't matter how much time has passed. Old friends can pick up right where they left off. It was like that with your dad and me when we bumped into each other after high school, she mused with a fond smile. Tonight will be the perfect chance for you guys to catch up. If he wanted to catch up, he would have called or texted me. I still have the same number. And it's not like he doesn't know where I am. His parents live next door. I see his car in their driveway every Friday night. She made it a point to leave the house as soon as he arrived and not return until after he'd left. Okay, maybe she wasn't giving him a chance to find her. But he'd hurt her with his silence. In all the years she'd been in Southern California, he'd only texted her on her birthday. The time she contacted him, their conversations were brief and superficial. After a while, she'd given up on keeping in touch, especially after her acting career, brief as it was, took off. Even then there had been no congratulatory email or Facebook post to show that he cared. Despite their history and what her mom said, she doubted he wanted anything to do with her. Her mom gave her a pointed look. You haven't been making it easy for him to find you. You're out practically every evening. This place is starting to feel like a hotel or more of a youth hostel, considering we don't charge you for rent, she winked. I sometimes wonder if you even live here. Lucy did hope to move out soon though, not just to be on her own again, but to decrease her chances of bumping into Micah. Her shoulders slumped at the thought. Wow. How depressing. Micah was supposed to be her friend, her family even, but their relationship was next to non-existent. How would they ever get back to where they used to be? What do I need to do, Lord, to make things better? She prayed silently, hoping for a miracle. Her mom continued, interrupting her thoughts. Give him a chance, Luce. Just go over for dinner. You can always leave early. How funny. Lucy recalled having a similar conversation with her dad a dozen or so years ago when her family had first moved to this house. That night had turned out to be a wonderful memory. Perhaps tonight could be one, two. Fine, I'll go. A few hours later both families were seated around the Chan's dining table. With Hope and Lexi away at college, she and Micah had been promoted to sit with the parents. Considering she was now 23 and he 26, they were more than qualified. Part of her, however, wished they were still kids. Life had been so much simpler then. She snuck a look across the spread of Chinese dishes on the table to where Micah sat across from her. 
He happened to glance her way, too, and their gazes locked. She squeezed out a smile, her first one of the night, and received a smile that was just as forced. The crinkles around Micah's eyes that she loved were nowhere to be found. The man she used to joke around with and confide in had become a stranger. The rest of the meal dragged on with one half of the table engrossed in conversation and the other half, hers and Micah's, as speechless as a silent movie. Once Lucy had taken her last bite of food, she gathered her plate and chopsticks and stood up. Auntie Olivia, Uncle Matt, thanks so much for dinner. I've got an early morning tomorrow, so I'm going to head home first. Good night, everyone. She'd made her way to the kitchen and dropped off her dishes in the sink when she heard a male voice clear his throat behind her. She turned around, hoping to see Micah, instead she came face to face with an older man. Dad? Hi, sweetie. Crossing his arms, he took a deep breath. I know you don't like it when I poke my nose into your business, but I feel this is something I need to say. It's time you work things out with Micah. Avoiding him is not the answer, neither is holding on to your pride. It may surprise you, he smirked, but I've let my stubbornness get in the way before. It's a good thing your mom is just as stubborn as me and calls me out on it. People are worth the effort, Lucy. Talk to him while you have the chance. Her dad's tone had softened over the years, her heart had as well, and what he was saying was easier to swallow. She couldn't imagine what it must have been like for him to lose her mom, his first wife, at age 27. Loss had made him overprotective, but more tender-hearted, too. You're right. I'll talk to him. Thanks, Dad. He walked with her out of the kitchen, parting ways as they passed the dining room. She paused at the chance foyer to slip on her shoes, and had just knotted her laced-up espadrille sandals when someone walked over. She glanced up, surprised to see Micah. Your dad asked me to walk you home. He said it was getting dark. If it weren't for the fact that her dad was playing peacemaker, she would have rolled her eyes. Instead, she tried to ease the tension with a chuckle. Ah uh, yeah, thanks. You know how hard it is to navigate those thirty steps from here to next door. Lucy followed him into the cool autumn air. The door closed behind them, shutting out their parents' conversation. Outside, the sound of rustling leaves punctuated their silence. The setting sun painted streaks of red and orange across the sky above them, drawing her attention upward. Micah looked up as well, you always did love watching the sun set. It's so beautiful. There's so much smog in SoCal, you never get to see how vivid the colors are. I really missed this when I was away. She turned his way, ready to share her heart. She wanted her friend back. I missed you, too, Mikey. I miss talking to my big brother. His expression softened at her words. You sure about that? Of course. We used to talk almost every day. I miss that so much. You seem to have survived okay without me. I survived, but it doesn't mean I was happy. I mean, how could I be when my best friend didn't want to talk to me? She stared into the distance past Micah's shoulder, so she didn't need to meet his gaze. She hated rejection, and she felt like she was on the brink of another one. I don't expect things to go back to the way they used to be but could we just stop avoiding each other? He scoffed and shook his head. I haven't been the one doing the avoiding. Every time I come over to my parents' place, your car's gone. I have noticed, you know. You haven't exactly tried to reach out to me either. She wasn't proud to be turning the tables on him, but she'd rather shift blame than admit how hurt she was. You could have called or texted. You had plenty of chances to do so. I could have. I should have. He paused. I didn't mean to be distant for so long. But once we stopped talking, it was easier to not reach out than to try to contact you. And to be honest, I didn't know you missed me. I thought you didn't need me anymore. His last sentence came out so softly, 
she almost didn't hear him. But the essence of his message was clear, he had been hurt, too. What made you think that? That couldn't be farther from the truth. I was away for the first time in my life and on my own. Of course I needed you. I'll always need you, Micah. Cocking his head to one side, his expression grew wistful. Because it sure didn't seem like it. You left without so much as a look back, you were so eager to go. You only came home twice a year. You stayed down there during the summers to work. Then you got cast in a movie and I didn't think you'd ever come back home. She winced. Everything he said was true. She had neglected her family during those five years. She couldn't change the past, but she could do something about the present. Facing him squarely, she stated, I'm here now though and I'm back for good. I know. I'm glad you are. I want us to go back to being us. Or at least try to. What does that mean exactly? Maybe we could watch a movie or have lunch together sometime. Just regular friend stuff. Sure, that could work. He cracked a smile and added, as long as it doesn't involve shopping. She rolled her eyes. Deal. Maybe you could help me prepare for job interviews, assuming I get any. You wouldn't happen to know of anyone willing to hire a drama major with minimal work experience, do you? As a matter of fact, I do. The drama teacher at my school just gave her notice. I can put in a good word for you. I'm sure they'd call you in for an interview based on my referral. And once they meet you, it'd be a done deal. Thankfully, the confidence in his voice was more than enough for them both. Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of office work. No offense, but you would never survive in an office, Micah laughed, and the glow of the streetlight showed off the creases around his eyes. I really think you would enjoy teaching high schoolers. I don't know, Mikey. The timing's perfect. You need a job and there's an opening. Remember what I used to say about God working everything, out for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, she finished for him. She took a deep breath, feeling oddly content even amid uncertainty. It helped that Micah was here and he believed in her. More than that, he still cared for her and had all these years. She couldn't be happier in that moment. Okay, let's do it. Great, he grinned. Hey, do you want to hang out right now? Go grab some ice cream. Ice cream is for kids, she joked. How about some coffee? Coffee it is. And he gave her the biggest, most genuine smile she had seen in a long time. Chapter 5 October, Present Day Lucy Hello, Earth to my fiancé, is anyone there? Lucy jerked her head up to find John staring at her with amusement on his face. Sorry, did you say something? I was saying, I think you've stirred that long enough. He pointed to her small rectangular dish of soy sauce and wasabi. You were so zoned out you didn't hear me for a good five seconds. You okay? She wasn't, but it wouldn't do their relationship any good to reveal she'd been thinking about another man while she was here with him. They were at her favorite sushi restaurant again, the one where John had met Micah for the first time. Ironically enough, they were seated at the same table as that evening, and she couldn't help but think of her best friend. How Mikey knew her order from memory and always poured just the right amount of soy sauce into her dish, three quarters of the way full. And how they would fight over the last pot sticker, but he would always let her win. Then he would proceed to tease her about how she ate it, skin first, meat last, and how it was the wrong way. Eating here with John, unfortunately, wasn't as fun or memorable. She set down her chopsticks and tried to focus on the conversation at hand. She owed him that much, she was wearing his diamond ring after all. I'm okay. Just tired. The beginning of the school year is always a beast. Understanding registered in his blue eyes. That's rough. You remember what we talked about before? 
The offer still stands. Feel free to quit anytime. My salary can support the both of us. And now that we're engaged, you could stop working and focus on planning the wedding. Her gaze fell to the colorful assortment of sushi displayed on a wooden boat in the middle of their table. There was so much good food, but she suddenly lost her appetite. How could John suggest she give up a job she loved? I know you mean well, but I'm fine with working, really. If you insist. But what about our wedding? I thought most brides couldn't wait to start searching for a venue. Did you look at the list of places I emailed you? Yes. I appreciate you doing that. She did, especially considering how busy he was at the hospital. Even knowing his packed schedule, she hadn't made time to do her share. Why? Because, honestly, the whole idea of planning a wedding stressed her out. Or maybe it was the idea of marriage. Whatever the case, she wasn't in a hurry. The longer she could delay the planning, the better. I was actually hoping for someplace outdoors. Outdoors? As in a garden or a park? That might work as long as it's not allergy season. I was thinking someplace tropical. Like a beach in Hawaii. John hesitated for a moment, his mouth pursed as he considered her suggestion. Hawaii? You want to get married in Hawaii? She shrugged. Ever since my family and I went to Kauai after my high school graduation, I've been wanting to go back. It's such a romantic place, perfect for a honeymoon, too. It is. Sure, why not? I'd be far away enough from the hospital that I couldn't go in if they paged me. He chuckled at his own joke. It's a great idea, Lucy. She squeezed out a smile, unsure if she felt relieved or not that he agreed. Well, if we do a destination wedding, it'll take me more time to plan everything. I'll need to research online and read reviews for different vendors since we won't be able to visit them in person. Who says we can't? Why don't you do your research and narrow down some choices? Then we'll take a couple of days off, fly over, and visit the different vendors. Do you have a week off for Thanksgiving? Um, only half a week. What about Christmas break? Don't you get two weeks off? I do. Normally, she'd be thrilled at the idea of spending the holidays on a tropical island, but her chest tightened at the thought. Are you sure about this? It's a lot of money to spend on something I can do over the internet. This is our wedding we're talking about, a once-in-a-lifetime event. I want to make sure you're happy with everything. Lucy nodded. She should have been happy, thrilled, even, with John. He was handsome, generous, and willing to do anything for her. Then why couldn't she shake the feeling that he wasn't the man she wanted to be with? That the one she did long for had been avoiding her for the second time in her life. But this time, they didn't have the benefit of distance to lessen the awkwardness. Ever since she'd asked Micah to support her decision to marry John, he had kept his distance. At first, she assumed he'd been busy getting ready for a new school year, but when he stopped wanting to carpool, she knew something was wrong. When she confronted him, he simply said it wasn't appropriate for them to spend so much time alone together when she was an engaged woman. She accepted his answer, but it still hurt. This current separation stung more than the one they'd gone through when she'd been away at college, mostly because she couldn't avoid seeing him on a regular basis. He parked his car in the school lot near hers every day. She passed by his counseling office on the way to her classroom. He sat at a different table in the staff lunchroom now, but still within view of hers, and often chatted with the new choir teacher, a curvy brunette who was too perky for her liking. Micah didn't seem to mind though, he was all smiles when he was with her. All Lucy managed to get out of him were curt, good mornings, and, see you laters. Maybe that's why she missed him even more. But that was also why she shouldn't be missing him. Micah appeared to have happily moved on with his life, without her. Chapter 6 December, one year ago. Micah. What do you think, Mikey? 
Do these make my calves look more defined? Ha! Huh. Micah looked up from his phone where he'd been scrolling through his news feed. Lucy stood before him in a pair of three, make that four, inch heels. Her short skirt billowed around her knees as she spun around. She'd shown him eight pairs of shoes in the past twenty minutes, which explained the lack of enthusiasm in his voice. Uh, yes. I think they look like the other ones you just had on. What's the difference? What's the difference? Those were plain pumps. These have straps. You're no help, she groaned. Other than the fact that you can carry my bags, you're not a very good shopping buddy at all. He chuckled. It had taken her two and a half hours to figure this out. That was how long he had been following her around their local mall while she finished her Christmas shopping. Even with carols playing overhead and festive red and green decorations hung throughout the department store, Micah was having a hard time getting into the holiday spirit. He'd rather be sitting in his recliner at home instead of on a hard bench surrounded by shoes. But Lucy had begged him to accompany her, and he couldn't say no to that pouty smile of hers. Shopping is not my forte, but let me try again. He studied the shoes and had to admit they showed off Lucy's legs well. Honestly, those long, slim legs of hers looked great with or without heels on. He grinned, his next words coming out effortlessly. You look amazing no matter what you wear. Ah, uh, thanks, she gushed as she slipped the heels off. That was a better answer. He watched her place the shoes back in their box and onto the shelf. Aren't you going to get them? They look great on you. They're too expensive. I only started teaching and I want to save up money so I can move out. I've got plenty of shoes as it is. But they're cute, aren't they? There was no reason for Micah to feel bad for her, she had more shoes than the days of the week, but he did anyway. The way her mouth twisted to one side reminded him of their first meeting when she'd put on a brave face about changing schools. That's when he sensed a tug on his heart urging him to befriend her. He felt the same urge now to make her happy. So, he snuck away a few minutes later and bought the pair of heels while she was trying on clothes. Lucy stuck her head out of the dressing room and stepped out when she spotted Micah. Hey, where'd you go? Just some last-minute Christmas shopping. Pointing to the dress she had on, he asked, are you going to get that? Or do you have three other dresses just like it to try on? She stuck her tongue out. Very funny. No, this is the last one. I think I will get it. It's professional enough to wear to school, but it's also comfortable. Too bad I can't get those heels I tried on before. They would go perfectly with this dress. Micah couldn't stand the disappointment on her face. He stopped her before she headed back into the changing room. Here, this is for you. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to wrap it yet, but I thought you might want it early. Brows drawn together in suspicion, she took the shoebox he handed her. She lifted the lid and gasped. Mikey. You bought the heels for me. I can't believe it. I'm so happy I could kiss you right now. Thank you. Micah's heart skipped at the thought of her mouth on his. As unexpected as the idea was, it also sounded wonderful. He puckered up his lips in anticipation when she threw her arms around him. Her mouth landed on his cheek though, sending a deep surge of disappointment through his body. Never mind. It was better this way, he tried to convince himself as they separated. You're welcome. Consider yourself special. I've never given shoes to anyone before, you know, because of that Chinese saying. What saying? My grandparents told me when I was young that if you give shoes to someone, they'll walk away from you. I didn't think you were superstitious. I'm not. I have too much faith in God to believe in superstitions, but that saying always stuck with me for some reason. Maybe because of what your parents went through. Their separation really impacted you. It makes sense that you wouldn't want to do anything to jinx a relationship. He nodded. You have a point. That's a good analysis for someone who's not a counselor. She planted a hand on her hip. 
I'm your sister, Mikey, that's better than being your counselor. I know you better than most people. I might even know you better than yourself. Her cheeky grin tugged on his heart. How he wished she knew his heart's desires. You do know me pretty well. I'm happy you like the shoes. I hope you'll put them to good use. Don't worry, I will. She hugged the box against her chest and squealed. Thank you, Mikey. You're the best. If her words were true, then why did he feel second-rate? If only she felt the same way about him as she did this pair of shoes. Chapter 6 December, Present Day Micah Knock, knock. Micah looked up from his desk to find Lucy standing in the open doorway to his office. Her expression mirrored those of the students who got referred to him for counseling, unsure and wary. He expected that kind of reaction from his teenage clients, but not from his longtime friend. But the way he'd been treating her lately didn't resemble friendship. They'd grown apart again, and he had no one to blame but himself. He couldn't be around Lucy and pretend everything was okay. Things weren't okay. He hated that she had another man's ring on her finger. He'd been avoiding her, but staying away wasn't the solution either. If he really cared for her, if he loved her like he knew he did, he had to do more. He couldn't sit by and let her marry John. Hi Mikey, do you have a minute? Yeah, sure, come in. He closed a client file and shoved it into the bottom drawer of his desk. How are you? I'm okay. She entered and paused by the chair across from him. She held a small flat box wrapped in silver paper and tied with a blue ribbon. She set it on his table and pushed it forward. I wanted to give this to you in case we don't see each other over break. Merry Christmas. Aren't our families getting together next week? She twisted the engagement ring on her left hand. I won't be able to make it to brunch. I'm taking the rest of the week off and flying to Kauai with John. We're checking out some vendors we want to use for the wedding. This was news to him. You're getting married in Kauai? Probably. It was my idea. I was going to do all the planning online, but John insisted we see the places in person. He got a few days off, so we're going. She gave him a small smile as she gestured toward the box. Anyways, I thought I'd drop your gift off. Open it. The last thing Micah wanted was to open his present. Shake some sense into her. Yes. Declare his love for her. Maybe. Instead, he took the gift. I haven't finished my shopping yet, he began to apologize when she cut him off. It's okay. I didn't expect anything. I just wanted to give this to you. He ripped away the wrapping paper and opened the box inside to reveal a silver 5 by 7 frame. Inside the frame was a picture of the two of them at their first dinner together. They sat at the kitty table in his parents' house, both smiling over their plates full of half-eaten potstickers. He'd been on the cusp of adolescence and remembered staring at himself in the mirror that morning, searching his upper lip area for traces of a non-existent mustache. Lucy had her hair held back in a long French braid that hung over one shoulder. She had dyed it recently back to her original color, so that it resembled the auburn shade in the photo. Even at the age of ten, she'd been so beautiful, and they had looked so carefree. He swallowed past the lump growing in his throat. I forgot we took pictures that night. Where did you get this? My mom was looking through some old photos to find inspiration for a painting and she found it. It's nice, isn't it? He met her gaze. It's, perfect. Thank you, Lucy. He propped open the stand on the back of the frame and set the photo on his desk. I love it. I'm so glad. I didn't really know what to get you this year, but I thought you can't go wrong with a good memory. She glanced over her shoulder at the open door. Most of the students had left campus by now, but there were still a few office staff walking around. When the hallway cleared up, she approached his desk and leaned against it. Her brows knit together as she spoke. 
I hope this picture reminds you of how much our friendship means to me. I know we've been going through some changes and we'll probably go through some more after a, she swallowed, get married, but you'll always be my friend. You'll always be one of my closest friends, Mikey, my best friend. Please know that. His hands clenched tightly in his lap until he could feel the blunt tips of his fingernails digging into his palms. That was the problem, he didn't want to be her best friend. Plus, he doubted John would be okay with him keeping that title after they got married. He wanted more, a lot more. I know how you feel and I appreciate what you're saying. But. I don't think I can stay friends with you. In fact, I know I don't want to be friends, don't. She sprang to her feet. You don't need to say any more. I get it. No, Luce, you don't understand, that's not what I meant. It's okay, Micah, you don't need to explain. It's not the first time things have changed between us, but I was hoping we could weather through it like we have in the past. But I guess maybe we can't. She turned on her heels. I need to go. Have a good break. I'll see you around. Lucy was out of his office before he could wrap his head around what had happened. Why hadn't he come out and told her how he felt? Why? Because there was so much at stake. Not only would he be breaking her and John up, he would be putting their friendship on the line. Even worse, what if she rejected him? Lucy was right, rejection could be a terrible consequence of bravery. The two were the sides of the same coin, without the fear of rejection, one wouldn't need to be brave. He sighed as a Bible verse from 1 John 4 verse 18 came to mind, there is no fear in love. That was the bottom line. If he loved Lucy, he had to let go of his fears. For the sake of their friendship and their future, he was going to do just that. He prayed it wasn't too late. Chapter 7 December, one year ago. Lucy. This is amazing, Luce. Thank you. I feel like a celebrity. The look on Micah's face when they arrived at the Curran Theater in San Francisco had been worth all the trouble she'd gone through. Using some old connections of hers, she'd managed to get tickets to the Bay Area premiere of Chris Pratt's newest movie. It was the perfect evening and she had the perfect date at her side. Micah looked so handsome in his tux, she'd caught several women in the crowd gawking at him. But he was all hers tonight, in a strictly platonic sense, of course. You're welcome, big bro. One perfect Christmas gift deserves another. Plus, it gives me the chance to wear these awesome heels you got me. Don't they go great with this dress? He gave her an appreciative once-over as they stood outside the roped-off entrance. You make anything look good. Just try not to fall. Those extra four inches make you look like you're walking on stilts. Don't worry, I've had plenty of practice. She presented her photo ID and the email confirmation on her phone to the security guard. He unhooked the rope and allowed them to pass. Lucy glanced over her shoulder as she stepped onto the red carpet. Come on, Mikey. This is it, my favorite part of the night. He caught up to her, his eyes open wide. Are we supposed to pose or something? I have no idea what to do. Just smile and have fun. If we're lucky enough to get our picture taken, don't look directly at the flash. Keep your eyes focused on the black hole of the camera lens. Just a tip I picked up from my last premiere. How many have you been to? Just two. She took the arm he offered her as they began walking. Tonight is more special though. I didn't have a special accessory to hold on to last time. Micah touched the lapel of his tuxedo jacket near his heart. Ouch. That's all I am to you, an accessory. She laughed at the exaggerated hurt in his voice. Would you prefer the term arm candy instead? As long as you like me for more than my looks, he winked. He reached for her hand and intertwined his fingers with hers. Her mind immediately went blank. So much for coming up with a witty comeback. Her skin tingled from her fingers straight up her arm. Could this be a romantic gesture? 
No. He was just being nice and brotherly, right? And likely feeling overwhelmed by the fleet of paparazzi on either side of them. Although the cameras weren't pointed in their direction, the accumulation of flashes going off around them was as blinding as a snowstorm. Squeezing his hand, she quickly led him to the auditorium doors. They handed over their cell phones at the security checkpoint and went through the metal detectors before heading inside. Is the concession stand open? Micah asked. We can't watch a movie without popcorn. You and your popcorn. You're in luck. She pointed to the counter across the way and pulled him over. These are all free. Take your pick. No way. I need to come to more of these events. He grabbed a large bucket of butter-laced popcorn. What do you want to drink? I'll have water. I don't want to risk getting soda on this dress. The floor-length off-the-shoulder gown she'd rented had set her back a bit, but it was still cheaper than buying one. With her hair in a fancy updo, she felt as glamorous as a movie star, or a girl at her prom. An old memory surfaced of Micah coming to rescue her so many years ago. He was such a good guy, always watching out for her. She was happy to be able to treat him tonight. How about you? Water for me, too. She grabbed two bottles of water with one hand since the other one was still happily in Micah's possession. They strode into the theater and climbed the stairs together. When they reached their row, Micah let her choose a seat first, then sat down beside her. He promptly let go of her hand to balance the bucket of popcorn on the armrest between them. Darn. That one action snapped her back to reality. She needed to stop reading into his actions. She grabbed a handful of popcorn, ready to focus on something else. Thanks. He flashed her a giddy smile. This is so cool. This movie got really good reviews. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the showing for Ice Queen was all sold out, she drawled with sarcasm. This was the only choice left. Ice Queen. Is that a real movie? No, Mikey, it's a joke. Remember how you took me, Lexi, and hope to watch Ice Princess? That's right, I forgot about that. I might have repressed the memory since it threatened my manhood. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Micah turned in his seat to face her. Do you remember how insistent you were that day? You just turned 13 and said I had to buy you an adult ticket. You wouldn't take no for an answer. Of course, she did. That was also the first time she'd kissed Micah. Granted it had been a quick peck on the cheek, but that moment had been a turning point of sorts. That was the day she felt like more than Micah's little sister, exactly what, she wasn't sure, but it was something more. I remember. I was trying to abide by the rules. What kind of example would I have been setting for our sisters if I'd gotten away with paying for a child's ticket? Sure, that was your motivation, he chuckled. He then leaned close and lowered his voice. Hey, I always wanted to ask you something about that day. What? Why did you get upset at me? Upset. I was upset. Remember how there was a girl from my class who sat with us? A girl, oh yeah, what was her name? Betty or Bella? Becca. You didn't like it that I shared our popcorn with her. What? She feigned innocence. Rehashing her immature behavior from a dozen years ago was not her idea of a good time. I had no issues with that. You must be remembering things wrong in your old age. No, I remember what happened pretty clearly. Nothing happened. If you say so. I always wondered though, did you have a crush on me? No, she insisted, trying to keep her tone calm. Don't flatter yourself. He shrugged. It's okay if you did. Feelings like those are normal, especially when you reach puberty and the hormones start kicking in, all right, thank you, Mr. Chan, she cut in. You don't need to go into counselor mode on me. I'm good. 
I heard that talk plenty of times from my dad when I was growing up. I bet you did. I'll spare you the details then. He cleared his throat, his expression turning serious. Honestly though, I would have been flattered if you had been interested. Any guy would be lucky to have you look his way. Whoever you end up with is going to be one happy man. There was such a longing in his dark brown eyes that she wondered if he was talking about himself. Stop dreaming, she chided herself. It was definitely wishful thinking on her part. I feel the same about you. You are definitely crushable, as the kids like to say. As crushable as arm candy. Sure. You're crushable arm candy. How do you like the sound of that? He laughed. It works. Their conversation was cut short when a middle-aged man appeared at the front of the theater to announce the movie. Micah turned his attention to the screen, leaving Lucy to stare at his profile in the dimming light. His words played over and over in her mind as a pit formed in her stomach. Maybe they were too close or life was too complicated for them to be anything other than friends. God help her because it was time she faced the truth. She had long given her heart to Micah, but he would never give his to her. Chapter 7 December, Present Day Lucy Lucy squinted and lowered the sunglasses resting on the top of her head. She and John had arrived on Kauai yesterday morning and had already checked out several venues, a plantation, a winery, and two hotels. They had spent most of the day talking to vendors, then retired to their separate hotel rooms at night. She knew the agenda for today would be just as crammed with visits to a bakery, a floral shop, and a photography studio. With their return flight in two days, on Sunday, Christmas Day, it was a whirlwind of a trip. She didn't mind the busyness though, it kept her from being alone with John who'd been pushing her to set a wedding date. And too occupied to think about Micah. She couldn't believe how cold he'd been when she stopped by his office to drop off his gift. It was one thing to say he didn't want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with her, but to end their friendship? That was cruel. Sniffling, she tried to push him out of her mind. You okay? John set down his mug of coffee and reached across the breakfast table for her hand. Is it allergies? Maybe. There are a lot of flowers here. She simply nodded and hid behind her shades. She'd rather blame the colorful plants that surrounded their table on the patio than tell John the real reason for her tears. John wiped his mouth with a napkin and pushed back his chair. We should get going. Our appointment with the bakery is at nine. Sure, let's go. They drove their rental jeep from their resort by the Lehu Airport and headed west on Highway 58. Less than ten minutes later, they arrived at a small bakery situated in a strip mall. The cloying scent of sugar mixed with fruit greeted them as soon as they stepped into the shop. Lucy spotted the display case and smiled for the first time that day. She pressed her hands against the glass and peered inside. Malasadas. The small fried balls of dough rolled in sugar brought back the best memory of her trip to Hawaii seven years ago. After she and Micah had a disagreement by the pool, he'd tried to patch things up. He'd shown up at her hotel room that afternoon with a dozen malasadas. She still remembered the contrite look on his face when she opened the door. Hey, Luce. Can I come in? She motioned him inside and they both sat down on one of the double beds. An hour had passed since she returned to her room, enough time for her to calm down and think things through. Even though she wouldn't admit it, Micah had been right. Her flirtatious behavior had been out of line. If only she had listened to him, she'd still be enjoying herself outside instead of being stuck indoors. At least he was here, and with a peace offering to boot. What's that? This? He opened a white bakery box and held it out to her. These are malasadas, the best donuts you'll ever have. They smell so good. Her eyes were likely as round as the fried pastries. Are they for me? Please say they are. Yes, well, half of them are. 
He handed her one. I'm willing to share. Thanks. She took a bite of her malasada and ended up with a mouthful of creamy filling. The unexpected squirt of the slightly tart and sweet gooey goodness made her laugh. Yum. I didn't know there was stuff inside. What flavor is this? This one's my favorite, Lilikoi. Also, known as passion fruit. She nodded in appreciation. That sounds like something you'd like. What do you mean? You're passionate. You take things seriously and aren't afraid to make your opinions known. Yeah, well, sometimes I can come across a little too strong. He set the box to the side and faced her. I'm sorry I was so hard on you earlier. I just care about what happens to you. With you in LA, I won't be there to keep you out of trouble. You're going to have to watch out for yourself. I know you care. But I'm an adult now. I need to make my own decisions and maybe even make my own mistakes. You can't protect me forever, Mikey. I'm starting to realize that, he sighed. But I'll be praying for you every single day while you're gone. And I'll be waiting for you when you come back. A figure joined Lucy at the bakery's display case, drawing her attention back to the present. She turned to find John standing beside her. Oh, hey. He tapped the glass. What are these? They're Hawaiian donuts. I'm going to get some. Do you want any? I'm good, thanks. Lucy placed her order and soon received her box of malasadas. She was about to leave when John reminded her of why they'd come, to look at wedding cakes. Darn. She couldn't believe she'd forgotten about that in all of her excitement. One of the ladies behind the counter gave them a binder of photos to look through. Another woman brought out samples for them to try. After a half hour of cake tasting, John asked her, which one do you like? I think I'm partial to the vanilla. I like the lilikoi, the passion fruit. That one's not bad, a little strong though. She smiled. I like strong. Okay, passion fruit it is. Let me ask about their pricing. As John talked to one of the staff, Lucy's phone vibrated to signal an incoming text. She fished it out of her straw tote and swiped the screen. Attention! A lockdown of the Union High School campus has been ordered. Please remain calm. Teachers, secure your students in your classroom immediately and begin following lockdown procedures. All office staff remain in or report to your offices. All other staff report to the gym. Parents, do not try to locate your children. Your children will be released to you after the lockdown has been lifted. A lockdown. The school staff had received training for events such as this, but she had yet to experience one. She could only imagine how scared the teachers and students must be. Some would likely need counseling afterwards, oh. Was Micah okay? Her fingers fumbled as she pulled up his number and typed out a message to him. She sent the text and waited anxiously for an answer. Micah usually had his phone on silent during the school day, but maybe he'd check it in an emergency. When he didn't reply after a minute, she called him, only to have the call go directly to voicemail. That's when the tears welling in her eyes began to fall. She said a silent prayer and asked God to watch over the whole situation. John walked over with a paper in his hands. I got the pricing list. It looks reasonable. He took one look at her and exclaimed, What's wrong? Do you not like the cakes here? No, it's not that. There's a lockdown at school. She held up her phone to show him the text message. They don't do lockdowns unless it's something serious. Maybe one of the students got upset and acted out or, I don't even want to think about the possibilities. She blew out a shaky breath and wiped her eyes. I tried calling Micah, but he's not picking up. I don't know what to do. I'm sure the school knows what they're doing. He knelt beside her chair and patted her knee. Don't worry. It'll be okay, 
It's not okay. What if he's hurt? Or worse? Oh, she didn't want to go there. Her chest was so tight, she could hardly breathe. All she could think about was how she never got to tell Micah how she felt. She never told him she loved him. I want to go home. I need to go home. Now. We should stay calm and find out what's going on. Why don't we check the news or, I know, talk to your dad. He's a cop. He should know what's happening. Yes, why hadn't she thought of that? Thank you, John. I'll call my dad. Her dad picked up on the third ring. Hey sweetie, how are you? I thought you might be calling today. Daddy, the school, she managed to choke out between sobs, Micah, let me talk to him, John offered as he took the phone. Lucy watched as John explained the situation to her dad. He described the text message she had received, then paused to listen. His eyebrows rose in understanding and the worry lines on his forehead disappeared. He gave her a small smile before he hung up the phone. First of all, John began, everything's fine. At those words, she felt a weight lift from her chest. Micah's okay. He should be. The school's on lockdown because of a chemical spill in the area. All the businesses and residences in a two-mile radius were ordered to stay indoors until the spill gets cleaned up. Oh, that's all. I don't mean that's all, but it's not as bad as I thought. I'm so glad. Looking upward, she added, Thank you, Lord. I'm glad, too. Given John's answer, Lucy expected his tone to be more gracious, but it fell flat. She met his gaze and saw sadness in his blue eyes. Are you okay? Not really. He took the seat across from her, his shoulders slouched in defeat. I need to ask you a question, Lucy. What is it? He hesitated. Do you want to marry me? She shook her head as if she hadn't heard him right. Did he know? What? Do you want to be my wife? This time his voice was firm. Because if you don't, please tell me now. The pain on his face tore at her heart. It hurt her even more to know she was responsible for it. But it was time to be honest with him, and herself. She removed the engagement ring from her hand and set it on the table. I'm sorry, John. He winced. I was hoping you would tell me I was wrong. She shook her head, finally finding the courage to say the words he needed to hear. I can't marry you. I'm so sorry. He took the ring and stared at it sadly. I think I knew ever since the first night I met him, I just didn't want to believe it. Met who? Micah. I know how much he means to you. I wondered if I would ever be able to take his place in your life. For a while I thought I had. You were willing to come here with me and it felt like we were moving forward, but your reaction just now, she held her breath, waiting for him to say what she already knew. It showed me you're still in love with him. Air filled her lungs again, expanding with the certainty of John's words. If only the truth setting her heart free didn't have to feel like a death sentence for him. I never meant for this to happen, John. He shook his head. It is what it is. Maybe I was too eager to make things happen. I put you in a tough situation when I proposed at the dance, didn't I? I was caught off guard. I mean we hadn't even talked seriously about marriage yet. It was a touching gesture, but it wasn't meant for me. I was excited to meet someone like you, but more than that, I wanted my mom to be happy. I should have known you can't force love. Neither could one deny love, which was what she'd been doing. If she had been honest with Micah, she wouldn't be in this situation right now. I never meant to hurt you, John. Please know that. He nodded. I know. I'm sorry, she apologized again, not knowing what else to say. I'm sorry, too. He sighed. So, what do we do now? I'd like to go home. Okay. 
I'll take you to the airport. No, please stay. I can get a taxi. Are you sure? Yes, I'll be fine. Thank you though. All right, he accepted reluctantly. She clutched her tote bag to her chest and rose. Please take care of yourself. John stood as well and stepped forward to give her a hug, then offered her his hand instead. You, too. Lucy gave him one last wave as she exited the bakery into the bright sunshine and possibly, an even brighter future. An hour later, Lucy had checked out of the hotel and arrived at the airport, ready to take the next flight to California. She couldn't wait to see Micah again. Only two days ago, she had arrived confused and torn. Today, surrounded by the tall swaying palm trees behind her and the departure's terminal in front, she was surer than ever of what she wanted. She'd rather be back home doing mundane day-to-day -day stuff with the man she loved than in a tropical paradise by herself. Only five hours, and the longest security checkpoint line, stood between her and Micah. It seemed like everyone was heading home. Passengers of all ages and stages of life stood outside, waiting to have their luggage scanned. Lucy lined up as well, setting her carry-on down at her feet. She spotted a young couple a few feet ahead wrapped in a warm embrace. The man rested his chin on top of the woman's head while her hands went around his waist, ending up in the back pockets of his shorts. The tender way they looked at each other made her feel like she was intruding upon an intimate moment, yet she couldn't tear her eyes away. She wanted what they had. She wanted to be Micah's and she wanted Micah to be hers. And she didn't want to wait anymore. Taking her phone out, she opened her text messages. There was still no reply from Micah, but at least she knew he was safe. She typed a couple of lines to him, Hi Mikey, I'm coming home early. I'd like to see you, and hit the send button. She placed the phone back in her jean pocket and kicked her bag forward as the line moved. Between checking her phone for the time and for new texts, she spent the next ten minutes talking to the Lord. He already knew her heart's cry, but she prayed her desires would be in line with his. If it was his will for her and Micah to have a future together, she would embrace it with open arms. If not, she would grieve and move on. Oh, how she hoped it would be the former. With three people ahead of her at the checkpoint, Lucy decided to check her phone one last time. As soon as she opened her texts, she saw three flashing dots next to Micah's name. He was replying. The dots disappeared, then reappeared before a message popped up. You're going home. Where are you? She quickly typed, at the airport. My flight's in an hour. Are you okay? I heard about the lockdown. What lockdown? Hold on, I'll call you. Her phone rang after a few seconds. Mikey. Lucy, what lockdown? What are you talking about? His voice warmed her in a way the humidity of the island couldn't. She was so relieved to hear from him. The chemical spill near school. Aren't you there? I thought that was why you didn't pick up your phone when I called earlier. I'm actually not at school. The sound of traffic, cars honking and motorcycles whizzing by, echoed in the background. Where did you say you were again? How strange. Why wasn't Mikey working today? I'm waiting in line to go through security. Did you take the day off? I did. He paused. I thought it was time I did something I should have done a long time ago. You're playing hooky. I didn't know you had it in you. She could picture his smile. Hearing him happy made her happy. Even with the distance between them and the abrupt way they had parted a few days ago, there was no awkwardness to their conversation. She was so thankful for that. It was proof of how strong and deep their friendship was. I hope you're doing something relaxing or fun. Or both. Oh, I am. I most definitely am. It would be even better if you joined me. I wish I could, but it'll be late by the time I land. 
Lucy stepped up to the TSA agent and handed him her ticket and driver's license. Once he cleared her to go through, she picked up her bag and put it on the moving belt of the X-ray machine. She also placed her purse and flip-flops in a large gray bin behind it. Hey, I'm going through the checkpoint now. Can I call you back in a few minutes? No, Luce, that's not going to work. It's only for a minute. I'm holding up the line. I gotta go, stop and turn around. I can't. I'll call you back, I promise. Lucy Choi, turn around. Micah's voice was louder and clearer now, almost as if he were a few feet behind her, but how could that be? Lucy noticed the TSA agent behind the X-ray machine shift his attention from the monitor to her. In fact, all the passengers around her had grown silent and were focused on her. Wide grins lit up their faces. What was going on? A little girl behind her spoke up, her high-pitched voice in awe. Is that your boyfriend? Lucy spun around. A tall and handsome man waved at her from behind the roped-off line. Wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt with khaki shorts and loafers, he looked oh so pleased with himself. His dark brown eyes, insistent and unwavering, with those crinkles at the corners that she loved, held her gaze. The tenderness in them told her all she needed to know. Micah had come for her. Will you join me, Lucy? His voice was still in her ear, but she could see him mouthing the words. She lowered her phone and nodded. She began moving in time to the rhythm of her heartbeat, skipping over the pavement with her bare feet as she weaved through the crowd. Miss, wait. Your luggage. She'd get her belongings later, but for now the only thing Lucy wanted to do was run to Micah. At the end of the line, she squeezed under the rope and found him waiting there. A sudden shyness overcame her and uncertainty crept into her mind. Why had he really come? Mikey, what are you doing here? The real question is why you're here. What are you doing going home already? He glanced around. Where's John? The reality of what she had done hit her, unleashing a flood of tears. As an actor, she could cry on demand with a thought, but this reaction came from someplace deep in her gut. It was rooted in fear and regret and longing, so much longing. Her throat was so constricted she couldn't speak. She held up her ringless hand, hoping Micah got the message. You guys broke up, he asked in disbelief. He repeated the words, this time with obvious relief. You guys broke up. Lucy nodded. I couldn't marry him, not when I'm in love with someone else. The smile on Micah's face wavered as he choked up. That's why I came. I couldn't let you marry someone else, not when I'm in love with you. That was all she needed to hear. She jumped into his open arms and buried her face in his chest. I love you, too. I think I've loved you for a very long time. He pulled back to look in her eyes and gently wiped away her tears. Me, too. Maybe ever since the day we met. But most definitely after we shared that kiss. Lucy shook her head, not knowing whether to laugh or groan, so she did both. I thought we agreed never to talk about it again. You can forget everything you want about that night except for the five seconds our lips met. Because that's when everything changed, in the best way. He paused, swallowing hard. I changed. I used to be afraid of what would happen if I let myself get close to someone but you showed me it was okay to be vulnerable. From the moment we met you trusted me to take care of you. You trusted me enough to let me give you your first kiss. Being with you, Lucy, is like watching the sun set. You know what's going to happen and you don't expect anything new because you've seen it before, but it still surprises you with its beauty. You bring that kind of wonder into my life every day. I can't imagine my life without you in it. If it weren't for Micah holding her up, Lucy might have melted into a puddle right then and there. Was this for real? The Lord was answering her prayers, and it was more wonderful than she could have imagined. The perfect way she fit in his arms, 
snug and secure, made sense, just like how they made sense. It was like the pieces of a puzzle coming together, their edges and curves blending to form a complete picture. The evidence of God's hand upon their lives, working everything together for good, all beginning from when they met 15 years ago. Maybe you can't imagine life without me because I've always been there, first as the girl next door, then as your colleague at school. I've always been tagging along. I'm glad you didn't get tired of me. I could never get tired of you. Frustrated, yes, he chuckled, but never tired. I didn't buy those shoes for you so you'd walk away from me. If I had known all the trouble they would bring, I would never have given them to you last year. But maybe those heels were what we needed to get us to this point. God still worked everything out for our good, just like you said. She smiled and pulled him close. I got the heels and the guy. I'm so glad you're here. I thought last Christmas was great, but this is the best Christmas ever, hands down. This is the best gift I could have asked for. Hold that thought. I have something else for you that I think you'll like even more. He dropped his hands into the pockets of his shorts, rummaging through them until he found what he was looking for. He pulled out a small box, opened it, and dropped to one knee. Lucy's jaw dropped as well. The velvet box contained a diamond solitaire ring sparkling in the tropical sunshine. A circle of small diamonds surrounded the pear-shaped stone in the center. The silver band bore an engraving in fancy script on the inner side, Lucas loves Lauren loves Lucas. The phrase repeated itself over and over so one couldn't tell which name came first. The last time she had seen this ring, her dad had explained the significance of the words. Marriage was a never-ending circle of love, the greatest bond one could have with another. My mom's engagement ring. How did you get it? Your dad gave it to me. He said your mom hoped whoever asked for your hand in marriage would propose with it. You talked to him before you came. I talked to both of your parents and mine, too. They all supported my decision to come. It seems they've been waiting for this day to happen. He paused. I was planning on buying you a ring myself, but your mom wanted you to have this. Is it okay? The tears began falling again, this time out of joy. How wonderful to have another memento of her mom's as her own. Unable to get any words out, she simply nodded. She presented her left hand to Micah, waiting expectantly for him to put the ring on her finger. I haven't asked you the question yet. I already have my answer. I'll make it fast then. He took her hand in his and stated, Lucy Choi, I've loved you since I was thirteen. I want to love you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? A collective gasp resounded from the passengers gathered around them. A couple of people took their phones out to take pictures. A few others hushed the security agent who was still calling out for Lucy to claim her luggage. She didn't care though what anyone was doing because she only had eyes for Micah. Micah with his hopeful smile and tear-filled eyes. Micah, the boy, with whom she spent her childhood and teen years following around. The young man who watched out for her like only an overprotective brother could. And now the older, wiser man who was willing to commit the rest of his life to loving her. She'd been wrong. This was the best Christmas gift he could give her. A marriage proposal from her best friend. Yes. I'll marry you, Micah. She allowed him to slip the ring onto her finger before pulling him up to his feet. Applause filled the air mixed with whistles and shouts of congratulations. Her gaze connected with Micah's and they both laughed at the attention they were receiving. It looks like we've got quite an audience. He winked at her and asked, you know what they're waiting for, don't you? I think I have an idea. She stood on her tiptoes and wrapped her arms around his neck. It's something I've been waiting to do, too, for a long time. So, you do admit I'm a good kisser, he ribbed. I can only assume that's why you want to kiss me again. Really? She laughed. Have you ever considered that maybe I'm the better kisser and I have something to teach you? 
It's possible, but I don't have enough experience kissing you to be sure. I'm willing to work on that if you are. Okay. One kiss and we'll decide who's better. One kiss, huh? She narrowed her eyes. One kiss will tell all. His gaze dropped to her mouth as he cupped her face with both hands. A current of anticipation filled the space between them as he captured her mouth with his. His lips, so soft and gentle, warmed her to her very core. She didn't think it was possible, but Micah had gotten better at kissing. Maybe it wasn't so much his skills, but his heart. He kissed her with a trust and a tenderness he didn't have before. She felt his passion and abandon as the kiss deepened, drawing her in. He pulled away much too soon, a lovesick grin on his face. Okay, you win. Me? I was going to say you win. That was even better than our first kiss. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she nodded, her tone playful. If you don't believe me, we could try it again. Again? His expression turned thoughtful. If you insist. I will kiss you as much as necessary, and more. For the rest of our lives. He pretended to give the question some thought. I could manage that. Good. Because there's no one else I want to kiss than you. And to emphasize her words, she placed a kiss on his lips, with a promise of many, many more to come. The End Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook. To find out more about Li Wen Wai Ho's other books, please visit her website at liwenho.com. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified when a new audiobook releases.